Leicester. You see how successful Leicester have been in recent seasons with you know, that counter-attacking football with Vardy always pulling on the shoulder and, and giving up possession. We've seen this season with Jose and his tactics, especially with Spurs, happy you know, not to have a lot of the ball. Kane and Song really dropping deep, uh, allowing runners to go in behind. So it'd be interesting to see how this one pans out. Kane and Son versus Fofano and Johnny Evans will be the game that we're, we're hinge for me today. I think okay. if Kane and Son really appear on form, it's going to be a cracking. Johnny Evans back from suspension for Leicester, comes back into the back four. Wilfred Ndidi moves into the midfield. Nampelis Mendy drops to the bench. Timothy Castagna is back for the first time in 12 Premier League games. And he started out lining up at left back, I think, with James Justin at right back. Mark Albrighton in for Cengiz Zunda, who drops to the bench. Two changes for Tottenham. They continue to ramp up the pre-match atmosphere here. The stadium looks absolutely majestic, as Steve Sidwell said right at the top of the show. The great shame, obviously, uh, that it's a bit of a ghost town. There's no fans in here. The pitch, though, is like a snooker table because it is so soft and so lush that actually, Steve, out there, you can see where Tottenham were doing the sort of sprints in the warm-up where the footfall is marked on the pitch because it's just been brushed so beautifully and then after the warm-ups they're back out there looking after it again it is a it's a magnificent arena this isn't it it's an absolute carpet out there i mean this this stadium the surroundings the the, the big wall that they've described behind the goal to our right it's fantastic players just taking the knee on craig pawson's first whistle as they continue to drive home the message there is no room for racism in football second whistle signals that this game is underway third against fourth in North London, bright blue skies above, Leicester in the blue shirts with the white trim defending the goal away to our left-hand side and Tottenham uh, all in white, dark blue trim, blue shorts and white socks heading the ball forward towards Harry Kane, Johnny Evans wins the first battle, the ball ends up with Son who tries to curl a pass down the left for Reggion. he's one of the two Tottenham changes from the defeat at Anfield, Reggion in for Ben Davis and Tangi and Dombele uh, comes in for Stephen Burkvine. So I'm going to be interested to see how this Tottenham midfield uh, lines up against Leicester this afternoon. We'll give you the full lineups at the very next break in play. Undombele is on the ball. He turns away from Madison. I think he was tripped there by Undidi. He was. Tottenham have an early free kick, 30 yards from goal. So ostensibly, Steve, in the, in the Tottenham midfield, sort of four midfielders. Hoybier, we know the job he does. You've then got Undombele, Sissoko and Lo Celso. So, so how Jose Mourinho deploys them will be interesting in support of, of Son and Kane. There's plenty of energy, plenty of legs between them. We see in the week, especially with Sissoko in his role against a Liverpool, where he's covering on either side of the flanks and then in, into the middle. Again, it's something that they would have worked on. Um, not scared to, to change either one of them to go into the middle uh, or swapping swap sides. So interesting, but good solid start for Spurs. Free kick for Tottenham. Tangi and Dombele uh, has hurt himself, and he's, he's taken a while to pick himself up. He, he's caught on his left foot there by Undidi, and he's, he's rubbing the area. It's obviously sore. The whistle blows. Son with the free kick to the far post beyond everyone. Diago sliding for it. Can't catch it on the half volley. The other name I must mention, particularly considering the benches have now increased to nine substitutes, is that Deli Alley is not even on the Tottenham bench, Steve. So he was on the bench at Anfield on Wednesday when it was seven subs. It goes to nine, and he's not involved at all today. Gareth Bale is on the bench, but it's just been a very strange season for Deli Alley so far at, at Tottenham. It's been a very stop-start and um, a lot of talk where he'll go. You know, we're creeping into January soon, so that window will open. Will there be opportunities for going uh, for him to seek first team, regular first team football? But that's Jose down to a T. Sometimes he, he plays a player, then sometimes says, Look, I'm not going to need you for a couple of weeks, but get your mind ready or for that certain game penciled in. So says his former number nine from Chelsea. <laughs> I was for you to say that. <laughs> get it in early. Fafana on the ball for Leicester. Uh, so Tottenham have Hugo Lloris in goal. Serge Aurier continues at right back. Alderweireld and Dyer, the two centre backs. Reggion at left back. Hoybierg in front of that back four. Sissoko, Undombele, Lo Celso in support of Son and Kane. Undombele has recovered from the early knock. He wears number 28 for Tottenham. He's wide on the right. Uh, Kane's on the ball. I think Kane has been caught there. Goes flying over the tackle from Castagna. Castagna says no foul, a very dramatic tumble from Harry Kane and Tottenham have won the free kick before they take it, your Leicester team, Kasper Schmeichel in goal, 
Uh, Justin Fafana, Evans and Castagna. All Brighton and Barnes on the flanks. Tielemans and Ndidi in central midfield. And James Madison, who scored those two goals against Brighton this time last week in support of Jamie Vardy, uh, whose ten Premier League goals, eight of those, have come away from home. So Tottenham will be well aware of the threat that he poses, but so far all of this game has been played inside the Leicester half. Another free kick for Leicester to defend. Son again whips that ball into the near post. That is Vardy back there for Leicester, heads it away. Son's pass only finds Barnes. Harvey Barnes goes sprinting across the halfway line. Chased by Tottenham players, Vardy's gone hurtling forward in support. Barnes is still going, he's forced out to the right. Reguillon gets a foot on the ball and actually keeps it in play. Hoybierg tries to play it forward, it hits Tielemans and then goes out for a throw, and Kane wants to take that quickly, and this is Tottenham trying to counter. Son's lost it on the halfway line, 50-50 between Lo Celso and Barnes. Barnes wins it and then sprints past Lo Celso. Lo Celso dives in, hooks his left foot around the ball to win it back. Fast start to the game, Steve. It's like watching it on, on the Sky with Times 30, isn't it? On the Sky <laughs> remote, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a relentless start, you know. It just needs one of the, one of the teams to just put their foot on it there. Roy Burgers just done that and just controlled the tempo um, but yeah that's how that's how both teams are going to perform aren't they when they get the ball spring into counter-attacking here's Ndombele on the turn on the halfway line lost it to James Madison and exactly like Steve was just saying Madison immediately looking forward and wondering if Vardy can get in behind he can't because Tottenham is sitting that little bit deeper Madison's just allowed to stay on the ball eventually runs into Hoybier goes down and wins a free kick and just like Castagna at the other end, who felt he'd done nothing wrong, Hoybierg just, just turns to our referee, Craig Paulson, and says, how on earth is that a free kick? We'll watch the monitor. Is it a free kick, Steve? There was a slight a slight push, I suppose, but nothing dramatic for the fall. But again, it gives Leicester a chance to put the ball into a dangerous area. Here's a stat you will enjoy going into this game. There's only been one goalless draw in 100 league games between Tottenham and Leicester back in 1948, so I really hope I've not put the mockers on it, I really hope I haven't, it's nil-nil at the moment, we want goals, Madison holds his left arm in the air, free kick with his right boot, good delivery headed over the bar by Fafana who got up well, he just couldn't keep the header down and it goes behind for the goal kick, so Brighton won, Sheffield United won, uh, the Scottish Cup final from Last season being played, this season is underway. Full commentary on Five Live Sports Extra. That is Celtic against Hearts. Roddy for Cycle keep us updated on that one. And Manchester United 6, Bristol City 1. Uh, the only full-time score in the Women's Super League so far today. Latest I saw in the 12.30 kickoff was that Arsenal were leading Everton uh, by four goals to nil. A few games postponed in the WSL today. Birmingham, Manchester City, Chelsea, Tottenham and West Ham Villa. Dyer across uh, to make a tackle, Alderweireld in there on Vardy, wins it, knocks it out for a throw to Leicester. Taken by Castagna, very welcome return to action for him, uh, having not played since the end of October, and the win at Arsenal. Ricardo Pereira and Chala Soyuncu, couple still missing for Leicester, all Brighton playing wide on the right. Chased down that flank by Reguillon. Gets his pass back into the Leicester half. Wonderful view we have high up of proceedings here. Just watching Leicester building play inside their own half. And you can really get an idea of what the teams are trying to do sitting up here, this sort of pattern of play, Steve. You can, especially from a Spurs point of view. Uh, definitely a, a team selection that Jose's made. Uh, the midfield four to you know, on, in Dombelli and the Celso, Hoiberg, Sissoko to, to nullify the threat of Leicester. But I just worry about the threat for Spurs then when in possession, who's going to run beyond Kane, who's going to run beyond Son, because we know when Kane drops deep, Son is the only one that goes in behind. Leicester working it at pace, wide to the left. Barnes brings it in field. he started this game really well, trying to tee himself up for a shot, he was followed all the way by Aurier, gets the ball to Albrighton, curling ball to the far post, Alderweireld heads it away, then Dombele gets two goes at clearing that, second one ends up at the feet of Son, and then Hoybierg off balance with the outside of his right boot, clears, and it goes out for a throw, and already today, and I presume it's because of the way the teams are set up, but I watched Leicester try and try and try with lots of the ball against Everton on Wednesday, and didn't look as threatening as they already have in the first seven or eight minutes here uh, at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Madison and Reguillon, 
their legs get in a tangle and Reguilón ends up flat on his back and Tottenham win themselves the free kick. Jose Mourinho comes out and applauds his team, Brendan Rodgers does the same. Tottenham take the free kick, Manchester United leads your five live commentary at half past four this afternoon with John Murray and Robbie Savage, West Brom Aston Villa, Sam Allardyce's first game in charge of West Bromwich Albion in full on five live at 7.15 with Conor McNamara and Clinton Morrison. Johnny Evans wins a header on the edge of his own box. The ball bounces inside the Leicester penalty area from a back pass. So Schmeichel had to volley it clear, only as far as Sissoko. Kane's lost it, won by Albright, and slices the pass, was trying to release Vardy. Alderweireau would have been worried for a second there because it was one-on-one, -on -one, but uh, the pass luckily went in his direction and he was able to play it back to Hugo Lloris. Nine minutes gone. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. The Celso comes towards Aurier on the right. Aurier didn't think the option was on, so Tottenham playing back into their own half. Hoybier drops in between the centre-backs, forward to Kane. Kane looking to curl a pass out to the right, hits a Leicester body. So Ndidi is onto the ball for the visitors. Cross here to James Justin. Then for Farna, number two to number three, to number six if we're talking shirt numbers. Johnny Evans with that ball. Down the left, trying to get Castagna away, just slightly overhit. And the ball goes out for a throw into Tottenham on the right. Steve Sidwell. We just see Harry Kane there just dropping really deep to get on the ball. I mean, he comes literally on the halfway line. He's got Son and, and De Belli in front of him and Sissoko in front. The poor ball out to the right-hand side because Uri had acres of space to get down and, and try and get across him. Reguillon on the ball. We know that Jose Mourinho is not a massive fan of possession stats. Said so this week after the defeat against Liverpool. He said it was a bit like a really good piece of meat or fish cooked very badly. But sometimes they don't tell the full st story, which is, which is a classic Mourinho line. Uh, Alderweireld on the ball inside his own half, plays it wide to Aurier, immediately closed down by Harvey Barnes, finds Sissoko, Sissoko running across the halfway line, little ball to his left, finds Hoybierg, the Dane, Hoybierg to Son, little one-two, back to Sissoko, Again, immediately, Vardy and Madison right on top of him. Back to Hoybierg, into the feet of Son. Lay off to Hoybierg again, Madison's right there. Tottenham under pressure here, but keeping the ball, and Son back to Eric Dyer. And Leicester are quite happy with that, they force them back. They'll take a breath, they'll go again. Dyer will go long over the top, Harry Kane won't catch it. It comes skidding all the way through to Kasper Schmeichel, who's all in green. And he bowls the ball out underarm to Johnny Evans. There is one small square patch of sunshine left on this pitch which is in the Leicester left back position the rest of it in shade and Tottenham's giant golden cockerel on the roof of the stand up away to our right shining brightly in the sunshine Vardy leaps to get on the end of a Johnny Evans long ball Castagna will chase as Dyer clears with his left foot pressure on Dyer he's given the ball away here's Ndidi Ndidi to Madison 1-2, 25 yards out, wide to Albrighton, back to Justin, Justin sees Tielemans in a fair bit of space inside the Tottenham half, Justin to Madison, Madison turns away from Son, ball into the far post, headed away by Alder Weireld, Hoybierg tries to get a touch on it, spins off his boot and runs to Albrighton, who plays it back to Ndidi, Ndidi across to Tielemans, first time ball into that channel, Madison's almost onto it and Dyer's there, sticks a foot out, very important touch on the ball to clear it for Tottenham. Down the line here to Albrighton, two touches from him, and it runs out of play. Madison very nearly in there, Steve. A lot of play, a lot of positive play down this right-hand side for Leicester. Albrighton trying to get balls into the box, but Tillemans, I love him, he always tries to look for um, forward first when he receives the ball, never tries to play it safe and go square or go backwards, looks to get the ball in the box. Madison caught by Hoybierg, free kick Leicester in a very useful attacking position for them. Hoybierg had a bit of a swing at the ball in the air, and I think he came through the back of Madison, who's in a heap on the floor. The free kick will be right on the corner of the Tottenham penalty area. Uh, the right-hand side as Leicester attack that goal, away to our right. So, referee Craig Pawson just watching James Madison slowly get to his feet. James Justin comes jogging back to the touchline here to have a word with Brendan Rodgers and another member of the Leicester coaching staff. Brendan Rodgers getting his message across. I don't know whether Justin was called there or he went on his own accord, but he clearly had something that, that he wanted to say, maybe a question he had to ask. 
Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. 13 minutes gone in the first half. Third against fourth in the Premier League table. Still Celtic nil, Hearts nil in the Scottish Cup final. Full commentary over on Five Live Sports Extra. One man wall for Tottenham, it's Son who stands there, arms in front of him, Madison just slowly jogging on the spot, speeds it up, curls it in, this one's deep to the far post, headed back across goal, drops to Fafana, little touch, might fall to Vardy who drives it, hits a couple of bodies, Leicester half-heartedly appeal for a handball, nothing doing, and that is a half chance for Leicester early in this game. Let's check in on that Scottish Cup final. Roddy for Scythe. Yes, and we're going 14 minutes here. Hearts have come closest there, just as you came to me, with Stephen Naismith in a chase with uh, Connor Hazard, the inexperienced Celtic goalkeeper. Naismith won it, but the ball spun off and went wide. At the moment, then, it's still Celtic nil, Hearts nil. Thank you, Roddy. Kilmarnock nil, Aberdeen two in the early kickoff in the Scottish Premiership today. Jamie Vardy just went for power there, didn't he, Steve? Well, the chance before it was, was for Farnar. I was thinking it just seemed a bit hesitant, didn't he? The ball fell to him. You're thinking just swipe it in your left foot or just go for it on goal. It looked like he probably got a call from Vardy behind to leave it or to play it into his path. And then there were so many bodies in there, you looked to just go for pace and power and hope for the best. I think you're right, actually. I think had it gone in from Vardy, Fafana would have been credited with an amazing sort of Zola esque assist. But actually, for Fonner himself, but you know, possibly he gave way to the senior man there. He might have just been thinking instinctively, I could hit it. The ball breaks to Harry Kane, 25 yards out for Tottenham, up onto the edge of the area, closed down. It might fall to Ndombele, gets it back to Kane. Kane lays it off to Son, Son across goal beyond everyone and behind for the goal kick. And just when he thought it was going to be Kane for Son or Son for Kane, Son couldn't quite get that final ball right and uh, Leicester survive. It was a mistake. <laughs> From Leicester trying to play out, Harry Kane tried to make a few yards to have a shot on the edge of the box. It ricocheted back to him, made its way down to Son on the left-hand side. Again, probably caught in two minds whether to play it across the box for Ndombele or better off probably taking it on his left foot and having, having a shot on or maybe cutting it back onto his right foot for, for bending in the far corner. Full time in the Women's Super League. Arsenal have beaten Everton by four goals to nil. Commentary just starting on the BBC Sport website of Brighton Reading in the WSL, kicks off at half two, which is which is right now. Manchester United beat Bristol City 6-1. Highlights tonight from the WSL, uh, 11.40 on BBC One. If you're up in Scotland, uh, that is an hour later. It's a remarkable feast of sport, actually, on the BBC this evening. Sports Personality of the Year on BBC One at 8 o'clock. Match of the day two, half past ten. And then the women's football show straight after that. And don't forget, you've got 6.06 from 9 o'clock to half 10. So how you fit it all in this evening, I've no idea. But that is up to you. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Evans, long ball, floated to the edge of the Tottenham area. Reggion heads it away. Justin with the pass to Ndidi. Madison just with a poked first-time ball to Tielemans, who fizzes one low to his left and finds Barnes. Barnes controls it, plays it back to the Belgian. To another Belgian, Castagna, who goes for a scoop. Barnes... Neat control on the thigh, lays it back to Madison, takes a touch, didn't quite have time to get the shot away, Justin gives it back to him, this time he does, with the curler underneath it, and over the crossbar, more threat from Leicester. They work it so well with Leicester, don't they? If it's not on down the left-hand side with Barnes trying to wriggle in, he, he, he recycles the ball into midfield, Madison's first thought was, can I get a shot? No, goes out to the right-hand side, back into Madison, as soon as he gets half the order, he can get a sight and goal, his first effort doesn't trouble Maurice, but... The threat is there. Lloris goes long with the goal kick. He had the option of Aldevar El Dyer to his left. Jamie Vardy was lurking on the edge of the box. Lloris has cleared it. And the problem with that for Tottenham is it's given the ball straight back to Leicester. 17 minutes played on BBC Radio 5 Live. I presume lots of you will be listening to us on the BBC Sounds app, which means you can have a listen while you're on the move. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Johnny Evans back from the one-game suspension, having picked up the five yellow cards, missed three games at the start of the season as well, having been sent off on the last day of last season against Manchester United, but a reassuring presence in that Leicester back line, and Didi under pressure, facing his own goal, back to Justin, forwards to Vardy. Vardy lays it off to Justin, Vardy's now dropped deep, so Justin's going to continue the run down that channel, Hoybierg and Reguillon just slowly close the door on him there, like a pair of slide doors just shutting him out, Reguillon clears it, throw in 
Leicester, all Brighton spots Tielemans in space, who comes sprinting towards him. Tielemans wide to Justin. Justin holds on to it, plays it infield to Barnes. Barnes turns away from Hoybier, back to Justin. Nice stuff from Leicester again. They've started this game well, and Didi plays it across to Castagna. Castagna back to the halfway line. Tottenham having to do a lot of chasing in the first 20 minutes or so of this game. Fofana with a no-look pass, which is intercepted by Son. Couldn't quite control it. All Brighton back to win it. Leicester can start building again. Tielemans, got Harry Kane behind him, just drags the ball past Son. Has support from All Brighton on the right-hand side. Vardy makes his way into the middle. Here's Tielemans. Little ball forward to Madison. Madison across here to Barnes, trying to get the shot away. Its block comes back to Tielemans. Across to Ndidi, just outside the Tottenham penalty area. Castagna finds Ndidi. Ndidi lofts a high one to the right. That becomes a 50-50. All Brighton, who's not the biggest, wins it in the air against Reguillon. And then Dyer's forward to power the header away. But Leicester have it again, and they come again, and Albrighton, great ball into the near post, Vardy on the volley, he claims it got a touch from Eric Dyer. referee Craig Pawson agrees, that's a corner, goal in the Scottish Cup final between Celtic and Hearts, ready for sight. 19 minutes gone, Celtic have taken the lead, Ryan Christie, Hearts allowed him to do what he loves to do, which is cut in along the edge of the penalty area, get the ball onto his left foot, and curl it past the goalkeeper, Celtic lead, 1-0. Bantry continues on five live sports extra. Uh, Steve, in the last five minutes, all Leicester. Well, you feel as though if there was a stadium full of um, Spurs fans in here, they'd be on their, on their backs to, to, yeah. to get close, someone tried to get a tackle and get a foot in, because Leicester there played some superb football, but really at ease. What can they do with the set piece? You can tell Jose Mourinho's not happy with it at the moment. Madison's ball in, that is good delivery. Alderweireld heads it away, nodded back in by Barnes. Vardy underneath it, hooks a header across goal. Dyer volleys it away, Tielemans is there first, catches his pass on the volley and it goes out for the throw. But look look at uh, Mourinho, Steve, out of the technical area. He, he, he wants to get a message on quickly, doesn't he? Well, it seems that Spurs are really just defending in a structure, in a shape, and defending the space rather than getting close to, to players. When, as, a, as a player, when, when you're playing against a position that, that, that come into your territory, you need to start engaging at some point. At the moment, it's easy for Leicester to play around the back, pop it into midfield, pop it out wide. When the ball goes to Albright and he just wants half a yard to whip it into Vardy, it's far too easy for Leicester at the moment. At the risk of turning this into a piece of meat or fish that's been cooked badly, Jose, 61% possession for Leicester and that certainly rings true from what we've seen Celtic a goal up against Hearts in the Scottish Cup final as Roddy was saying before the game that's the possibility of a quadruple treble doing a domestic treble for the fourth season in a row for Celtic and obviously the man now managing Leicester was a large part of that uh, for Celtic Brendan Rodgers he's got his arms crossed in his raincoat but no rain falling here in North London Dyer plays the ball to Lo Celso, and Lo Celso has got a bit of urgency about him here, sprinting forward, Reggie on wide on the left, looking for Son, he's closed out by Ndidi and Fofana, Tottenham still have it with Reggie on, Hoybierg lets the ball go through his legs, and it comes back to Eric Dyer. plays it across to Alderweireld, Son Heung-min making his 250th appearance for Tottenham today, since signing from Bayer Leverkusen for £22 million, absolute snip at that price son and he's on 99 goals for the club as well so the next one uh, is the big three figures but it still puts him a, a fair few behind Harry Kane Fafana stands between Kane and Son at the moment on the ball diagonal out towards Barnes left brilliantly to win the header Vardy hooks it forward Castagna will chase that down the left Aurier and Castagna going shoulder to shoulder Aurier falls on top of Castagna accidentally catches him in the face with his arm. Castagna won't complain, though. He'll just run off a little battered and bruised. And Tottenham have a throw-in on the right, and at the moment, Aurier's the main man at right-back, Steve, isn't he? Matt Doherty, signed from Wolves in the summer, is is, is sort of second-choice right-back. Yeah, moment. he is, and, and credit to Aurier, because he has come on leaps and bounds under, under Jose. There was a lot of question marks. Um, you know, his concentration levels, uh, silly mistakes but defensively looks very, very solid in the Spurs shirt this season. That's the job of the coach, to improve the players. And Jose Mourinho has certainly done that with Serge Aurier. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Steve Sidwell 
with us here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium as Aurier throws the ball straight over Harry Kane's head and back into Leicester possession. Johnny Evans strokes the pass to Fafana, just 19 years old. Wesley Fafana, centre back for Leicester, and has settled into the Premier League quite superbly. Plays with the socks sort of half rolled down his legs, coming forward, drills another long diagonal. Aurier jumps and tries to bring it down on his chest. Rolls it forward to Lo Celso, turns away from Castagna, was barged over. Craig Pawson tried to play an advantage there, but Tottenham didn't really have one. And so that will be uh, a free kick for them, and Sissoko will take it quickly while Lo, uh, Lo Celso gets himself to his feet. Dyer for Tottenham across to Alderweireld. Kane and Son had made the runs down the channels. Alderweireld didn't go that way. Madison very nearly took the ball off Hojbjerg's toe, but he found Dyer. Dyer across to Undombele, who suddenly popped up at left back there. Reguillon's further forward down the left, chased by Albrighton. Undombele, I think, was looking for Kane. Son was in the channel, took the pass and played it back to Alderweireld. Left foot, that's not enough pace on the pass there. Barnes is able to intercept and very nearly knocks it round Aurier and almost collected it the other side, but it's gone out for the throw-in to Tottenham, Steve. Really good play from Leicester, out of possession, Ndidi, uh, Tillemans and Harvey Barnes really plugging the gaps, making it hard for Spurs to find Harry Kane. He's, he's struggling to find little gaps. That's what after a few times had to come even deeper than probably what he wants. So you can see the gap between the, the Leicester back four and the midfield is what, five, ten yards, really condensing the pitch. It's an engrossing tactical tussle at the moment on BBC Radio 5 Live. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Aurier chests it down. The Celso back to Sissoko, wide to Aurier. Midway inside the Leicester half on the right. Everyone behind the ball, including Vardy for Leicester. Hojbjerg now across to Son, who's on the halfway line in the middle of the pitch. Couldn't go anywhere because James Justin was breathing down his neck. Here's Alder out looking for the ball over the top to Kane. And Fafana again very coolly there. Didn't just head the ball up the pitch, knew where all Brighton was and flicked his header to his right. And all Brighton's played it down the right to Madison. That's come off Reguillon and it's gone out for a throw. I don't know how much you've seen of Fafana this season, Steve, but some player. I've seen a lot of him this season and I spoke to Danny Simpson who's, uh, who's doing his rehab. Um, with Leicester at the moment and he said he'd been in, in and around the training ground and said that this this kid can really go on to perform at the very very highest level it's been so so uh, uh, in pleased in terms of his performances at this, le at this level considering his age throw in Leicester the farmer decides to hand that over to James Justin 20 minutes left in the first half Tottenham nil Leicester nil Tielemans Volleying it forward with his right foot, Alderweireld underneath it, stoops to win the header, Reguillon heads it back infield, and Didi wanted that more than Ndombele, climbed above him and won it, it's fallen to Harvey Barnes, running at Alderweireld, step over into the penalty area, then the back heel, was just behind Castagna, but Tielemans is there in support, plays it to Castagna, now and Didi, Ndombele comes chasing forward for Tottenham, forces the mistake from Evans and Lo Celso runs into Castagna, the Argentine got the last touch and Leicester have the throw, wide on the left which Castagna gets ready to take into Tielemans Tielemans chased by Aurier and Leicester come all the way back deep into their own half Johnny Evans across to Fafana Fafana passes it across the face of Harry Kane to Tielemans good searching pass from Tielemans wide left Castagna chased by Lascelles so sliding challenge throw in Leicester they take it quickly Harvey Barnes has looked bright Aurier sticking to him and again forces him back into his own half and Johnny Evans just jogs with the ball at his feet, doesn't see an option forward so plays it back to Schmeichel Schmeichel to Fafana and Didi looking for a little turn away from Sissoko in the Leicester midfield Evans towards Barnes, Barnes just shakes off the attentions of Lo Celso Castagna with the ball down the channel here for Vardy Vardy into the penalty area on the left with the pullback. All Brighton stretches. Hojbjerg in exactly the right place. Gets there in time for Tottenham and, and clears. That is the job, Steve, of the defensive midfielder, isn't it? And that's where he's so dangerous as well, isn't it? Vardy always looking to pull on the shoulder. Didn't come off there, but it just gives a little bit of indecision there to, to the Spurs back four. Madison trying to pull the strings here for Leicester. Looking for the 1-2 with Barnes. Didn't quite work out. Went to Castagna. Castagna's giving it away. 
Ooh, Lo Celso's passed it straight to Barnes here. Clever trick from Barnes as Lo Celso came in to try and win it back. Lo Celso has another go, slides in and does win the tackle. Two Leicester players on him, he's lost it. This is Vardy, edge of the box, Aurier puts a leg in, can't make the tackle, cross comes in, volleyed away by Alderweireld. Lo Celso's tugged down, Tottenham get a free kick, and there's a penalty in the Scottish Cup final, Roddy Forsyth. What's on Edward, chips the ball into the net, almost a Penenka. It's a goal past Craig Gordon, it came because Christoph Berra, experienced centre-back for Hearts, handled the ball, and now Craig Gordon is being booked for having picked the ball out of his net and thrown it away in disgust, but Celtic have 2-0 in the lead against Hearts. Commentary on 5 Live Sports Extra. I know that Chris Sutton is attending that game today. He will be taking the calls alongside Robbie Savage this evening, 6.06 from 9 o'clock. So Celtic fans, you may want your say on the season so far and what looks like it could be uh, the quadruple domestic treble for you today, but still a way to go in that game, kicked off at the same time as this one. Good run by Sissoko down the right for Tottenham. They've had so little possession inside that Leicester half. His cross is intercepted. Ball is played forward to Vardy. Vardy's caught late by Alderweireld. Got the pass through to Madison. Will come back for the free kick, and I just wonder whether it might be a card as well. Maybe, maybe not. But... Um, Tottenham just haven't had the ball, Steve, have they? They just look out of sorts at the moment. We, we're used to a bit of play going around the back four for Spurs, and then the ball going into Kane, who's trying to find space, and, and someone, or normally it's Son, isn't it, that runs real deep in behind with a purpose. We've not even seen that today. They look like if they're going to score, it's just going to be off the cuff. Massively regretting the old only one goal is drawing a 100 league game stat. Mm, that is a real schoolboy error, that. Wasn't the day to bring that stat out. Definitely not, Steve. You can blame me. If that's what uh, transpires. So Ball. sloppy again there in possession, Spurs just giving the ball away needlessly. Led to a Leicester free kick, taken quickly. Tielemans over the top, sees the run of Justin, chests it down, down by the byline. Son is back there, good defending, knocks it behind for a corner. Yeah, you're right, Steve, it's sluggish, isn't it, from Tottenham? They just they seem like they need to just get a hold of the ball for a period of game, get their foot on it, move the ball from side to side, work Leicester. You know, Leicester have got a very good structure and a very good shape and they're very organised. But you've just got to move the ball from side to side and hope that one of the players switch off, allowing a space for maybe either Kane to drop into or running behind, and then that's when you exploit it. Corner for Leicester. Brighton, one of Steve's former clubs in the early kickoff today. Late equaliser from Danny Welbeck at home to Sheffield United. He finished 1-1. Madison with this corner, an away swinger, headed away by Kane. Here's Kane again, just outside his own penalty. Oh, Brighton's caught him badly there. Advantage played, Son could be away for Tottenham. Looking for the pass for Lo Celso, maybe, or further right is Aurier. The pass forces him slightly wider, Aurier's cross is blocked. Behind for a corner, Harry Kane is still down, slowly picking himself up. It was Albrighton with the challenge. Mark Albrighton gets booked, and that is the danger that Tottenham possess, that counter-attack at speed. Well, there was intense, there was purpose all on that attack, and it just lacked that final ball. A great run from Ndombele to get into the box, but it was there, wasn't it? There was a lot of energy around that attack, and Spurs are all lined up for a, a team that, when they go a goal up, the, the, the game tries to fall into their lap. I think what Albrighton did quite well there, maybe unintentionally, was take Kane out of the counter because Son looks up and he's normally looking for his buddy there, Kane, and he wasn't there for him. And the pass was just slightly wide uh, for Aurier. Tottenham have the corner, Tottenham nil, less than nil. We've played over just over half an hour in the first half here. And this corner will come in from wide on the right. Sissoko jumps, it's just over his head. Cleared to the edge of the area. Lo Celso wide to Son, first time cross from Son, Vardy hoists it high in the air on the half volley, then chases after his own clearance, the ball is loose and pinging around off shins and feet, and then Lo Celso's trip by Ndidi, edge of the penalty area, Ndidi is furious because he doesn't think that was a foul, it certainly looked like one from here, but this is definitely in shooting range. It did, uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a foul, wasn't it, Ndidi, I don't know why he was complain there to the referee, really, really impressed with Celso. his energy, uh, out of possession, getting around, making plenty of tackles and then trying to make things happen when he's on the ball looking for players, especially in that final third. So Tottenham free kick, 25 yards out, and as Kasper Schmeichel looks out from his left-hand post and lines up his wall, 
the free kick is just outside the line of that and he's going to stand in the middle of his goal it's an interesting one here because Kane can sort of go round the wall for the near post or really sort of Beckham style try and whip it across him and right into the top corner so Schmeichel just a yard off his line flexing his hands and fingers waiting for Harry Kane to possibly have a first shot on target for Tottenham in the game Kane is like a statue at the moment just waiting for that whistle right leg just behind left standing stock still takes one last look at the goal two steps back three forward takes a deflection Schmeichel palms that free kick away and Tielemans in the right back position is able to clear for Leicester downfield and there's no one forward there for them and Hugo Lloris is onto it Steve just have a little look at the replay of the free kick here oh it's hit the hand of Johnny Evans but it was down by his side it just seemed like an area that it was too far out and uh, too much of an angle to shoot really for Harry Kane I think he's took it on because he's, he's not really been involved in the game he was only one over it you thought there might have been Regulon with a left foot to go over it just to give a bit of complexity to Schmeichel Dyer with the long diagonal to the right Steve absolutely right on the and ball uh, A it was outside the area and B Johnny Evans arm was right down by his side uh, in the natural position so even if that had been in the box I don't think that would have been a penalty saw one last week where Abubakar Kamara got done for Fulham but he jumped with his back turn and his arm was actually away from his body and that was given as a penalty uh, according to the handball laws and Dombele to Son for Fana sticking to him like glue great speedy dribbling from Son and eventually Madison has a nibble uh, and fouls him and free kick for Tottenham so Tottenham having a better five minutes or so in this game after Leicester have had a lot of the first half hour but neither keeper's really been called into action Aurier swings across and Harry Kane's waiting Schmeichel with an acrobatic catch and he would have had his heart in his mouth for a second there because the ball sort of bobbled between his two hands but he's eventually able to hold on to it clears his penalty area and then bowls the ball out underarm to Johnny Evans so 10 minutes remaining in the first half Celtic leading Hearts 2-0 in the Scottish Cup final that game in full over on 5 Live Sports Extra surely Harvey Barnes is nudged in the back there he's fallen flat on his face as well so he's hurt his eye Lo Celso with the push He's looked sharp, Steve, I think Harvey Barnes for, for Leicester, wide on the left. First they've, touch has been really good today. Yeah, they've got a great balance, Leicester, because on the right-hand side, you've got Albright, Albrighton that doesn't muck around and play with uh, Mark Albrighton at, at Aston Villa, and he just looks to shift and get a ball in the box, and Vardy will love that because they haven't got a chop and, uh, and time is run. On the other side with Barnes, he's got the energy that wants to weave in and out, drive into the box and score goals as well. Ten minutes left in the first half here, just waiting for some treatment here for Harvey Barnes, so that uh, gives us a chance to get back to the Scottish Cup final. What's the latest, Roddy? Nine minutes uh, remaining here till half-time. Edward almost getting a second goal for Celtic there after the Hearts defence misplaced their attempt at a clearance that fell straight to him. And Hearts are trying to put the goalkeeper under pressure at the other end of the field. That's Connor Hazard making only his third appearance for Celtic, but they've not been able to do that to real effect. Celtic 2 Hearts nil. In terms of the Scottish Premiership, one result so far today, Kilmarnock nil, Aberdeen 2. I heard Steve saying earlier, Rangers coming from behind to win yesterday. 16 points clear at the top of the table, but Celtic do have the games in hand. 2nd of January is Rangers against Celtic in Ibrox, which is a massive game. <laughs> and Celtic, I mean, you feel, even at this, have got, have got to win that. Got to keep winning the games in hand, but have certainly got to win that one. So... Uh, that is still to come, lots of festive football on the way for you here on BBC Radio 5 Live and the BBC Sounds app. Manchester United leads, commentary at half past four, West Brom Villa, commentary at quarter past seven. Tomorrow night on 5 Live, full commentary of Chelsea West Ham, Burnley Wolves is the 5.30 kick-off tomorrow, that'll be on 5 Live Sports Extra. And then commentary on all four League Cup quarter-finals on Tuesday and Wednesday here on 5 Live. Free kick for Leicester. Madison takes it, swings it into the box. Hafana heads it down. He was actually having his shirt tugged a little bit, but the free kick's gone the other way for something that one of the Leicester players was doing inside the penalty area, unless the offside flag was up, or was it a... I think it was a push on Dyer. Dyer. It's been given from Fafana. That's where he got a half a yard from. What did you make, Stephen? I've not looked at it properly. Of, you know the late Liverpool winner? Eric Dyer went down there, didn't he, and claimed he was sort of blocked off the ball by Henderson. Was there enough in that? Not for me, <laughs> not for me. No. 
Well, mind you, saying that the slightest touches at the moment, you look at the penalty that was given last night for uh, for Newcastle yes. against Fulham. Kane chips it down the line, Aurier heads it infield, Lo Celso's not there for him, and Didi sprinting with the ball inside his own half, scoops a little pass with the outside of his right foot to Justin. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Leicester with more of the ball and on the ball again, and coming out of their own half. Tielemans to Madison. Madison loves that move, a little turn away using the outside of his right boot to get away from Aurier. Now Tielemans sees lots of space on the right, but just overhits the pass. Justin couldn't get there. And it's out for a throw to Tottenham in the left back position. Joe Hart is playing ball boy there. You could see that Reggion needed a ball. He came flying off the bench to pick one up and chuck one to his teammate. Reggion with the throw down that left hand side, headed in field by Justin. And Didi has got Son behind him, Sissoko in close attention as well. Justin plays it back to Schmeichel. Schmeichel out of his penalty area here to Evans. Harry Kane is lurking, so Fafana and Evans just got to be careful. But there's a triangle of three there, Schmeichel, Evans, Fafana, and Harry Kane is just one. So they're pretty comfortable. Evans then strokes it forward with his left foot. Vardy flicks it on, looking for the run of Barnes. Aurier's got to be careful here. New Barnes was coming up behind him, little overhead kick. Vardy read it, wins the bouncing ball with a header. Dyer beats him to it, lovely flick from Aurier on the back heel to Lo Celso. Back to Aurier, now the run from Kane. This is good from Tottenham. Son is waiting in the middle if Kane can get this ball in. Fafana's followed him out there. Kane lost the cross high to the far post. Son nods it down, Lo Celso tries to hit it on the volley. It's blocked and goes behind for a corner. Really good play down the Spurs right hand side. Fantastic flick from Aurier, wasn't it? to get half a yard, fed the ball in behind for Kane, and great movement from Son, darted in and then checked his run back out to gain two yards, tried to knock it down into the Celso, but shot was blocked. Much better from Spurs. In the WSL, Brighton 1, Reading 1. Just over 20 minutes or so into that game. Corner Tottenham, Undombele is offering Son the option short. Don't think Son's going to go there. Holds his right arm in the air with his right foot, delivers it, Kane heads it over the bar. He was up really well, and he just couldn't guide the header down. There was good pace on the corner, Kane made a great run. Will he feel he, he should have scored? I think he's going to feel disappointed there, it was a free head. Just got half a yard in front of his marker. I think it was Tillemans that was marking him right on the six yard, but it was a great delivery on the button. And he's got his full head onto it, Harry Kane, he's just gone over the bar, he'll be disappointed with that. And he had the old Son Kane one two again. Good tackle on Vardy by Dyers. Released Undombele. Undombele running into traffic. Lays it off to Kane. Kane's floated ball out to the right. Finds Aurier. Aurier's got four. Tottenham men to aim at. They'll appeal for a handball there. Aurier's cross is blocked by Castagna. It goes behind for a corner. The Tottenham players all come rushing round to surround the referee Craig Pawson to say that should be a handball. Let's see where Castagna's arm is. It's tucked in right by his body. It's hit on the elbow, Steve. Yeah, it's one of them ones where defenders, instead of standing their ground and putting, you see some now putting their hands behind their back and then they hit their chest, he's turned. As the ball's come in, he's turned away with it and he's hit his elbow that's tucked into his chest. So it did hit the hand, but as we said, the silhouette, it was inside that. Yeah, Paul Tierney, I can just see the Tottenham players have said, I've had the word from the VAR. That's, uh, sorry, Paul Tierney is the VAR. Craig Paulson said, I've had the word, no penalty. Corner for Tottenham. Kane with the header, headed back across goal. Vardy heads it up in the air. He was on the post. Kane's header was actually going wide. But that's two headed chances for Harry Kane in the last couple of minutes. Volleyed ball forward, is caught by Kasper Schmeichel. We're into the last five minutes of the first half. Schmeichel launches it downfield. Aurier jumps to win the header. And Didi with the next header, Hoybierg underneath it, flicks a header forward to Sissoko, Sissoko takes it round Ndidi, too strong, too quick, still Sissoko, good run, still Sissoko, through the challenge of Fafana, wide to Reggie on the cross is blocked, and it spins out to the right for all Brighton for Leicester, and he plays it down the line, Hoybierg has it covered, gets a foot on the ball, takes it past Madison, plays it to Dyer. Dyer back to Lloris with Vardy, Hurtling towards him, clears with his left foot, Albrighton underneath it, good cushioned header to Madison, Albrighton continues his run, Vardy's making a run to the near post, Albrighton's found him, Vardy with his back to goal, two Tottenham defenders behind him, lays it off to Albrighton, works it onto the left foot, hits the curler, not quite enough belief in that, I'm not sure whether that was a cross or a shot, and Dyer's easily able to clear it away, Leicester come again though with Ndidi, 
Plays it out to Castagna on the left. Castagna's got the ball on his right foot to Tielemans. Tielemans back towards Evans on the halfway line. Evans to Fafana. The indefatigable Son keeps chasing hard across the halfway line. Justin to Tielemans. Tottenham just drop off as Leicester work it from right to left. Two minutes remaining in the first half. Tottenham nil, Leicester nil. Tielemans to Evans, to Tielemans, Sissoko moves in, here's Madison, clever little ball through to Barnes, great defending from Aurier, just did enough to hold on to Barnes, they get a foot on the ball, real scramble between the pair of them and now Tottenham are able to bring it away, Sissoko's running into trouble though, in the form of Wilfred and Didi, driving forward, clever back heel, Madison with the curler, Maurice away to his left dives and makes the save. Really good game this last five minutes, isn't it? I'm, I'm sitting here like a school kid that's been told off in my back, sort of <laughs> upright. Um, Pay end, attention, Steve. Yeah, end to end, really, really good. Leicester looks so good and dangerous going forward. Spurs had an attack before that. Uh, it looks like, you know, it looks like it really does look like if one team gets one goal, it, it's just going to win the game. Out of Ireland with his right foot, long, long ball downfield. So I might get onto that. Fafana just got a foot there in time. Headed away, only as far as Kane. Kane finds La Celso, couldn't get it back to Kane. Right on the edge of that Leicester box. And Didi, though, trying to be too clever, has lost it here to La Celso, who kept harrying and hassling. Now on Dombele, can Reguillon get there? Sliding by the byline, hooks it up in the air. Kane's up, nods it down, looking for Son. Fafana's there just in time, foot on the ball. Clears it away to the edge of the box. Tielemans in strongly, got the ball, then got La Celso, and the free kick actually goes to Leicester, whereas I thought Tielemans might actually have caught the Celso, but you're right, Steve, last five, ten minutes have been it's really good, haven't end they? to end there, I mean, Reguilon done so well to get across him, it was just one of the ones that loop up really high, Harry Kane has to jump early, but because it's quite far out, past the six-yard box, you can't generate the power to get it on goal to Schmeichel. One minute of added time at the end of the first half, I've not really scribbled down a clear-cut chance for either side, the, the Kane header over the bar, the other... Kane header from a floated cross to the far post, but that was that was going wide, and I think Vardy would have cleared that off the line because it was difficult for Kane to get the, the power on it. There's been lots of, of good football to watch, but uh, chances few and far between. Dyer heads it forward, Kane muscles for Farner out of the way, then gets it back from Son, bounces off on Didi, and Didi was fouled, surely. Yeah, he is caught. Free kick Leicester inside the Tottenham half, so this will be the last chance in the first half to get the ball forward up towards that Tottenham penalty area otherwise we're going in goalless at half time you've narrowed it there in terms of between box to box the, the game has been so good but just lacked that final bit of quality around each penalty area need the, uh, the quality finishing that Liverpool showed you have you seen those goals Steve? <laughs> just one after the other I mean when Roy starts laughing at 6 and 7 just because the goals were so good it was remarkable. Madison's high floated free kick. Barnes wins the header. Aurier barges into Fafana right on the corner of the box. Fafana goes down, arms flailing, claiming for a free kick. We're about to get the half time whistle. Video assistant referee will have a look. Lacelso, though, is getting Son away through the middle. Little, oh, back heel to Harry Kane. Kane knew what was coming and he slipped as he tried to get onto that ball and he couldn't take it forward for Tottenham. Uh, for Farner, back on the ball for Leicester inside his own half. We've already played a minute and a half of added time at the end of the first half. And finally, Craig Pawson decides. Does he decide that enough is enough? Hang on. Has he blown the half-time whistle or are we checking on I, the penalty? I think they're checking the Oreo. I think you're right. It was a real Here we go. Rush. Oh, now then, that's interesting, Steve. Aurier has barged into the back of the Farner. One of Fafana's feet is outside the penalty area. One of Fafana's feet is inside the penalty area. And Craig Pawson is coming over to look at the monitor. I mean, what, what do we say? He's not played the ball. I, I, I was looking at it before and I was thinking, is it one of them ones that, because it's in the box, it's not given. But outside the box is 100% given. But now looking at the replay, it is so clumsy for Maurier. We spoke about how well he's been defensively this season. Here we go. That is a penalty. Yes. It's a penalty. Aurier, foolish challenge through the back of Fafana, didn't need to do it. And Fafana was only just inside the penalty. Literally, half of his body was in, half was out. But Aurier was there inside the box. He shoved him. And it means that Jamie Vardy will have the chance to give Leicester the lead with the very last kick of the first half. Well, it's so 
so disappointing from a Spurs point of view because the ball is going absolutely nowhere. He's in the corner, the corner of the 18-yard box, away from goal, no danger. Oh, he's just got to stand up, usher him away, and instead he tries to win the ball when it's not even on to win the ball. Jamie Vardy has been successful from the penalty spot five times this season in the Premier League for Leicester. This is a big one. This is third against fourth in the Premier League. And Vardy is taking deep breaths. He's standing just inside the box and he's staring at the ball. He's not looking at the Reese. The whistle blows. Here comes Vardy with his right foot down the middle. And Leicester lead just before half-time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. A crazy challenge from Serge Aurier inside the penalty area. And Jamie Vardy does not need another invitation. He scores from the penalty spot. It's Tottenham nil, Leicester 1. Well, that was all about pace and venom in that strike. It's been coming, isn't it? That's on, the, on the course of play, Leicester have deserved it. The whistle's now gone for half-time, but Leicester have gone in. So this with the lead and fully deserved, in my opinion. And, Steve, no, no argument about the penalty from you? No, not at all. I, when I originally see the, uh, the incident, I thought I was waiting for the referee to give it, or at least to, to review it. But obviously, the, the, the pattern of play had to proceed, and then we've gone back to it. So there was one commentator's curse we've avoided because I said it might be goalless and it's not It's not going to be goalless. But we were saying how well Serge Aurier was doing this season and that was more the Aurier of old. That was a rush of blood to the head. Didn't need to challenge for that ball. Barged into the back of Fafana, gave Leicester the penalty. At half-time, Steve, Tottenham nil, Leicester won. Yeah, daft that, Steve, wasn't it? Oh, very, yeah. I mean, it was, as, as uh, Alex just said, it's, it's the... The Urio of old, isn't it? You know, it was he's done so well this season and it was just daft. He's going absolutely nowhere uh, in, in terms of danger to goal. He's going away from goal, just stand up. He just makes a real rash decision just before half-time when you do not want to concede as well. In some ways, if that was going to happen to Tottenham, is it better that it happens now than just after half-time? Because Jose Mourinho can't send his team out now to counter-attack. That's right. And it seems like they're just off the pace anyway, Spurs. They're just... You know, kind of playing within themselves. They're not really laying a glove on, on Leicester. They're playing it around Leicester. They're playing very well. Uh, but there just seems to be an, an, they're, they're another, what, 10, 15, 20% from, from Spurs. You just feel like they're just not giving it everything at the moment. Uh, Steve, Ali, thank you very much. If it stays like this, then Leicester moving up to second in the Premier League table. They would be on 27 points, which would put them four behind the leaders. Liverpool and Spurs would stay fourth in the table. Second half commentary to come. It was just starting to really ramp up, wasn't it? Jamie Vardy's penalty has given Leicester the lead. It finished Brighton 1, Sheffield United 1 earlier in the Premier League. We've got more reaction to that come. Sheffield United's second point of the season. It's also half-time in the Scottish Cup final, Roddy Forsyth. Celtic 2, Hearts nil. Celtic well on the way it would seem to their quadruple treble and a place in history they were in action as early as the fourth minute uh, around Craig Gordon's goal, Greg Taylor punting over the top from 15 yards and then Ryan Christie, now this was a strange one because he had scored against Aberdeen in the semi-final by cutting in from the right, getting the ball onto his left foot just outside the penalty area and curling it around the goalkeeper in the far post. And guess what? He did exactly the same thing again in 19 minutes. So if they had done their homework, Hearts had evidently forgotten it. Then in the 27th minute, Christoph Berra handled at a cross coming in. In the old days, it would have been ball to arm. But now, of course, if you alter your body shape, it's a penalty kick. Up stepped Odson Edward. Neil Lennon said these occasions bring out the best in him. And the French striker executed a panenka. Gordon, so disgusted by being beaten like that, he threw the ball away and was booked for his pains. If Celtic score again, we can all go home. We won't, of course, but we could. Celtic 2, Hearts nil. Thank you very much, Ruddy. Five Live Sports Extra for commentary. Uh, we're going to get more from the Battle of the Brits tennis. Andy Murray against Dan Evans today. We'll look ahead to Harley Quinn's Rathing 92 in the European Champions Cup rugby. And we're going to hear from Luke Shaw ahead of Manchester United against Leeds, which is our 4.30 game on this Premier League Sunday after the news on Five Live with Nick Hatfield. On digital, BBC Sounds, smart speaker and online. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thank you, Steve. Good afternoon. Italy, the Netherlands and Belgium are banning travel from the UK and France and Germany could follow because of the new variants of coronavirus. It's much more infectious and has led to fresh lockdowns in London, along with large parts of the east and southeast of England, as well as Wales. 
Sakir Starmer says he supports tougher coronavirus restrictions over Christmas, but has accused Boris Johnson of gross negligence by not acting earlier. The Labour leader claims the Prime Minister is too worried about looking unpopular. The Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, says the government has a duty to take action as the new variant is out of control. The Chief Constable of Police Scotland has ruled out setting up checkpoints or roadblocks on the border with England over Christmas, but Ian Livingstone says extra officers will be on patrol to enforce a travel ban over the festive period. And the actress Rosalind Knight, who starred in the early Carry On films and more recently Friday Night Dinner, has died at the age of 87. She played Horrible Grandma in the Channel 4 sitcom. Christmas Day on Five Live. It's festive ho-ho-hos to one and all uh, to each and every Five Live listener. Here are some highlights and Christmas Day cheer. Colin Murray will be in the Yuletide hot seat from 7am. Then it's us, Ellis and John from 9. From 11, cuddle round your bubble compliant radios for a question of sport. And at 1, it's the best of Laura Whitmore's show, followed by a bit of Tailenders. And Her Majesty the Queen. It's a bit of a royal afternoon, really, with Prince William and Peter Crouch from 3.30. And Scott Mills and Chris start crank up the tinsel with a Christmas special from four. Christmas Day. On Five Live. You'll love it. Five Live's Premier League Sunday with Steve Crossman. Let's take you to the National Tennis Centre. It is the first day of the Battle of the Brits Premier League of Tennis and our correspondent Russell Fuller is there. And we're into a first set tie break after Dan Evans saved three set points and Andy Murray saved six break points over the course of the opening set. Three points all in the tie break. Murray in his first match for over two months has been covering the court very well in this match against the British number one. Looking to be aggressive when he can as well. It's a little surreal. We do have an umpire inside the National Tennis Centre. There's a camera crew as well, but that's just about it. So the players are fetching their own balls and also calling their own lines. Uh, Russell, thank you very much. Yeah, of course, COVID is uh, really wreaking havoc with all sport. The same is true in the European Champions Cup rugby for this afternoon. Harley Quinn's taking on last year's finalist, Rathing 92, in Pool 2. Chris Jones is at Twickenham, Steve. Hi there, Steve. Yeah, nice, dry, sunny December's day here. And today should be a welcome respite from everything else going on. And as you say, after the string of cancellations this weekend, it's a relief this one is actually going ahead Harlequins up against it in Europe already having lost to Munster last time out they'll need to win the remaining three games to have any chance of qualifying you feel and they've got a poor record against French opposition but it's always good to see Racing 92 up close they were inches from winning the whole thing last season class all over their side Finn Russell at 10 Australia great Kirtley Beal in the centre and the brilliant Simon Zebo at fullback so hopefully a good one today Thank you very much, Chris. So Chris will keep us up to date on Five Live. You can hear commentary, by the way, of Connacht against Bristol Bears. That's also in Pool 2. That's at 530 on Five Live Sports Extra. In the Premier League, in the early kickoff, it finished Brighton 1, Sheffield United 1 at the Amex. That's the second point of the season for Chris Wilder's side. Could have been all three, even though they had John Lundstrom sent off in the first half. They then took the lead in the second half through Jaden Bogle. Danny Welbeck equalised with three minutes to go and in stoppage time, Johan Bash hit the bar, nearly won it for Brighton. Here's their manager, Graham Potter. Yeah, possibly, but you've got to make it count, and, and we didn't make it count enough. I thought we started the game really, really well. Played with a better team for the first 30 minutes, which forces a tactical change for, for them because we were quite dominant. Uh, then the red card changes the game and makes it a bit more defensively attack, and we need to make sure we don't get caught, and we did. So that's something we're disappointed with. Uh, in the end, the second half is about character. I thought we showed that a lot. Had some opportunities to score more than one but didn't take them um, and in the end it's a point we're disappointed with but we have to move forward with. It's often said that it's harder to play against 10 than it is against 11. Was that the case today? Well not necessarily. I, I think you know how Sheffield United play. They, they defend the box really well. Even last year when they had all their um, plaudits they, they defend the goal well, make it hard for you to score against them. Don't concede many chances. Defend deep. With Burke today, he's got physicality on the break. So even though they're at ten, they're always um, they'll always feel that they've got a chance on that on that on that transition. So it is still complicated with ten, but clearly uh, we're disappointed because we, we we had it for a long time, the extra man, and you want to make it count more than we have today. 
That's Graham Potter with John Roder. Second half commentary to come from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Jamie Vardy's penalty scored in first half stoppage time. In fact, scored after the half-time whistle because it was a, a VAR review of a penalty incident. Serge Aurier punished and Jamie Vardy scoring the penalty. So Spurs nil, Leicester one second half commentary to come. After that at 4.30, we'll bring you full commentary of Manchester United against Leeds in the Premier League for the first time since 2000. And four, uh, we heard a little earlier a bit of Luke Shaw. Let's hear a bit more now. He's been telling our correspondent, John Murray, how impressed we was with Marcus Rashford in their victory over Sheffield United. No, with Rashi's, you know, we know the talent's there. We, we, we know he's got everything, but he's working very hard. And, you know, like I said, he, he's one of them that's, that's been there for a long time and he's still very young. And, but he's already very experienced and I think, you know, he knows what he needs to improve on. He knows he needs to work on stuff and, you know, he does that and, you know, it's frightening the ability he's got and, you know, when when he wants and, and when he shows what he can do, he's he's unstoppable. And me sitting on the bench, I quite enjoyed watching him play like that and I said to him after, you've got to do that every game because you can be one of the best if you do it. I don't know about you, when I see him do that and clearly Cristiano Ronaldo was a, was a great influence on him, I, I just see that. Do you? Yeah, no, of course. Um, you know, I don't want to, you know, put too much on his shoulders right now, obviously, because, like I said, he's still young. But, you know, I think he's got the confidence and belief in him, in himself that, you know, that maybe one day he can he can be at that level. But he just needs to keep working hard. And I think as a team, I said we need to keep consi- the consistency up. But I think even him, you know, if he keeps that consistency up game by game, We'll be talking about him like with like the likes of Ronaldo and stuff because you know he I'm sure he's got that ability and you know like I said if he keeps consistency he can he can he can even go up to another level that that can put him in the in the same words of of, of Ronaldo if he carries on. And finally, let's just have a little word about this match, the uh, the Leeds United match, which um, I have to say is 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 one of those matches that that you really look forward to during the course of a season. We haven't seen it for a long time. You've not been involved in one of these these matches. Such a shame there's not going to be a crowd involved. But how much of a student are you of the of the game? What have you made of Leeds this season? First and foremost, yes, yeah, it's, it's a massive game. You know, very unfortunate that we don't have fans. You know, Leeds are going to be a very tough team. I think they, they, they play a very different style to, you know, what we're used to. They probably cover every single blade of grass on the pitch. We know they're going to be run everywhere. They, we know they're going to be aggressive, you know. But also when they're on the ball, we know tactically they they know what they're doing and they know how they play and they know what positions they need to get into. So, like I said, if we're not ready and we don't start bright on on Sunday, we can find ourselves in a very difficult place. But with all respect to Leeds, they're a very good team, but. You know, we need to just focus on our game and, and be ready for, for the fight that we know that's going to come. Luke Shaw there speaking to John Murray. We'll bring John in after we hear about the end of the first set at the Battle of the Brits. Andy Murray against Dan Evans, Russell Fuller. And six weeks of pre-season training, reaping some early dividends for Murray, who's converted his fifth set point and taken the first set against Dan Evans on a tie-break by seven points to five. Russell, thank you very much. John, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Steve. I'm gorging on Christmas cake, I've been told. Yeah, Christmas cake, and uh, and just as you say that, Mariah Carey's come over the uh, loudspeaker oh. here. It's lovely to hear her again. We don't hear from her that often, do we? No, no, barely ever at this time of year. Um, you were talking to Luke Shaw there about the, the importance of this game and the size of this game. I make zero apologies for kicking off with the fact that it's such a shame it's not happening in Absolutely. front of supporters. Yeah, and uh, there's a brilliant cover of the uh, of the match programme today, which I will uh, I'll send it to you, actually. But they've got mm. in it, they've got a couple of old style rosettes, Manchester United and Leeds United. And they've actually got a series of 13 different photographs from Manchester United Leeds over the years. So you've You've got Bobby Charlton and Jack Charlton uh, shoulder to shoulder. You've got uh, Bobby Charlton and Billy Bremner shaking hands over the halfway line. David Beckham's on there. Eric Cantona, of course, you couldn't leave him off the front cover of the programme. Uh, Gordon Strachan's on there as well. Uh, some great photographs, and it really uh, it really tees it up beautifully. And and last time we were here a couple of weeks ago for the Manchester derby, you know, it turned out to be the game that it was that day. I think for a, a whole multitude of reasons, I'm not expecting it to be like that today. Mm. Uh, I'm told the teams are already on their way back out at the the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So, John, thank you very much. Back to your cake, I guess. Uh, Will do. Speak later. 
lovely. Cheers, John. Uh, yeah, more from John and Robbie Savage to come ahead of kickoff at Old Trafford. It's 4.30 for Manchester United against Leeds United. Let's take you back to the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Uh, Ali Bruce Ball is there alongside Steve Sidwell. Is, is Gareth Bale getting ready, Ali? Uh, he's, he is ready. Uh, he's, he's getting some final instructions on the side of the pitch. Steve and I were just saying to each other, he came out about five minutes ago into a totally empty stadium just to warm up and get ready. If this stadium had been full, Steve, and he comes running out with Tottenham 1-0 down, the place would have gone berserk, wouldn't it? It, it would have raised the roof and the, 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 it would have just got the fans behind the team and they would have come out, just what they would have needed. You know, again, I think that's what Gareth Bale has brought to this Tottenham team, this Tottenham squad. Just a lift in general around the training ground and it definitely increased performances. Well, it's Tanguy and Dombele uh, who's gone off. Gareth Bale comes on, and, and if you're playing cards and you've got an ace in the pack, I mean, what, what a card for Jose Mourinho to be able to play. Let's not forget, earlier this season, Gareth Bale came on against Brighton at home. Uh, Tottenham have been pegged back to 1-1. Gareth Bale came on and scored the winner in that game. Tottenham here, trailed by a goal to nil. The very last kick of the first half, Jamie Vardy striking home the penalty after Serge Aurier. Uh, was penalised by the video assistant referee, Paul Tierney, for a shove in the back of Wesley Fofana. We're just about to get underway in the second half. Another goal in the Scottish Cup final, Roddy for sight. And you wouldn't believe it, uh, <coughs> excuse me, almost straight from the kick-off, Hearts pressing Celtic, uh, White got a cross in, and there was Liam Boyce on the six-yard line with a header diagonally across the goalkeeper. It's now Hearts 1, Celtic 2. OK, makes things interesting. Full commentary over on Five Live Sports Extra. Reading's women now 2-1 up away to Brighton in the WSL. That's just heading towards half-time. Leicester leading 1-0. Harvey Barnes immediately on the attack. Lo Celso tries to bring him down, does bring him down. Advantage played. All Brighton drives a shot, takes a deflection. Alderweireld is there, clears with his left foot. Lo Celso has stayed down after that clash with Harvey Barnes, and Tielemans has spotted it and was actually asking his teammates to put the ball out of play. James Madison's ignored that, will shoot straight at Lloris, who makes the save at the near post, and now he will bowl the ball out of play. So Leicester leading 1-0, Lo Celso needs treatment. Leicester's away record this season has been pretty much exemplary. Five wins out of six games, and I was just thinking, Steve, we were talking about at the start of the game, both of them enjoying playing the, the counter-attack. I mean, Jamie Vardy now can sit on the shoulder of those those Tottenham defenders and, uh, you know, a bit like the, the famous words of, of one of Leicester's most famous sons, Engelbert Humperdinck, please release me, play me in if you can. Talking Humperdinck, that came from uh, Tony Livesey's Fact of the Day on Friday in the Drive programme, the, uh, the quiz for the football commentators on Five Live. I learned that Elvis Presley's big bushy sideburns were inspired by Engelbert Humperdinck, having seen him perform he decided to grow them himself, so we've managed to get it into the commentary, well, Steve. There's been some impressive stats today, and that has <laughs> topped them all. <laughs> Let's concentrate on the football. Dyer for Tottenham. So Tottenham need to find a way back into the game. Alderweireld floats it beyond Harry Kane, straight over his head. Kane couldn't even jump for that. Fafana behind him, collects it for Leicester. Plays it to Justin. Justin looking for the ball over the top. Madison controls it, in on goal, shoots and scores. Brilliant goal on the counter-attack by Leicester right at the start of the second half. The first touch from Madison was exquisite. He hits it across Lloris into the bottom corner. And Tottenham have got a big job on their hands now. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. Well, it's a great goal from a Leicester point of view in terms of so it just being easy, but the marking from the Spurs two centre-halves is terrible. Madison is just standing clearly in between them and just runs straight through. Dyer doesn't even know if he's there. Alderville doesn't pass him on. It's a fantastic touch from Madison and sweeps it past Laurie. It's a great goal from a Leicester point of view, but the marking is absolutely shocking from Spurs. Lines are out. VAR checking goal, possible offside. James Madison is definitely ahead of Eric Dyer. It's all about Toby Alderweireld, and we're looking at the screen at the moment. Both players' body position is exactly the same. They are leaning to their left, and we're just seeing here the video assistant referee, Paul Tierney, drawing the dotted lines down from their shoulders to check whether James Madison is beyond. And I tell you what, it's going to be that T-shirt line as well, because it will be the top part of his arm if he's offside. It would be such a shame to rule a goal of that quality out 
for a marginal offside if it is one. I mean, that has to be marginal. If you actually look, if you if you put the shadows of, of Madison and uh, Alderweireld together, they, they, it looks like they'll, they'll go into the same kind of silhouette. You know, it's exactly the same body shape. It's ruled out. No goal. Oh, that he's must offside. be so close. Paul Tierney's he's blown the whistle. Now, what does he want here? He wants a, a Tottenham free kick for the offside, but we're waiting for a change to be made as well. Lucas Moore is coming on for Giovanni Lo Celso. Lo Celso was hurt in the challenge with Barnes early in the second half. And it's, it's not that Tottenham have got away with one there, Steve, but it just... It's the rules, isn't it? It's, it's black or white, we can see it, the lines are drawn, and according to the technology, he's offside. It's just... It just feels harsh that a goal it, that good can be ruled out. It for... does feel harsh, and it is marginal, because you'd be saying the same thing if it, if it was the other way, if the lines were the other way, if it was a, yeah. a, a, a fraction onside, we'd be saying, well, let's keep it going. But it was so simple for him to get in there. It's Tottenham have to look at themselves quickly. Eric Dyer under pressure. Leicester have come absolutely flying out of the blocks in this second half. Madison's on the ball. He'll be fuming that that goal doesn't count. Scoops the ball with the outside of his right foot to Vardy. Vardy's cross is scuffed. Hits Alder Vireld, it's whacked away by Serge Aurier. Headed back here by Castagna, Johnny Evans underneath it, just launches it forward high in the air. Aurier couldn't control it with his right foot, lets it bounce and heads it back to Hugo Lloris, who immediately rushes to the edge of his penalty area, smashes it downfield, Kane flicks it on, he's caught off the ball by Ndidi. Free kick for Tottenham, it was accidental, Lloris in goal, Aurier, who conceded the penalty late in the first half, Alderweireld, Dyer, and Reggion. Uh, Undon Bele has been replaced by Gareth Bale, so I guess you're looking at sort of Bale wide right, Son on the left, and, and Kane through the middle. And now, uh, Hoybierg, Sissoko, and Lucas Moura uh, is on the field for Tottenham because of the fact that the Celso's had to come off. Schmeichel in goal for Leicester as Alderweireld goes long down the middle, Moore is underneath it, heads it back to Kane, who nods it on to Son, who chests it down and finds Kane again, play back to Sissoko, pass into the feet of Bale, his first touch of the game, little sideways pass, intercepted, Bale good in the air, leaps, flicks the ball on, and Didi's there and clears it away for Leicester, Harvey Barnes underneath it, battling with Aurier, fouls Aurier, but Aurier is able to keep going, regained his balance and eventually wins a throw for Tottenham, Schmeichel in goal for Leicester, Castagna, Fafana, Evans and Justin, all Brighton's on a yellow card, wide on the right, Barnes on the left, Tielemans and Ndidi, Madison who's just had that goal ruled out, playing off Jamie Varda, the scorer from the penalty, and Son has gone charging in with a leg outstretched to try and win the ball off Timothy Castagna, and that, that is a foul, and he's possibly slightly lucky not to get booked for it. What do you think, Steve? That's high, that's high on his leg, that. Yeah, it's one of the ones where it's down to the... I don't know, I think he goes to shield the ball, but... And he gets there before him, but just going back on the on the goal, yeah, it's a blessing in disguise, really, that for Spurs because they, that is a, a major warning to them now. Early on in the second half, what Leicester do, Leicester do possess. It's another one of those as well, Steve. That people will say, well, look, he can't score with his arm. Why, why is he offside? But the point now being that if it touches that sort of top part of your arm, your shoulder, you know, they, they don't want to disallow goals for that. It's the way we're now looking at the handball law. So you can effectively score with that part of your arm. That's why they draw on the line from there. A bit, bit like um, Patrick Bamford, the goal, you know, where he was pointing. That part of his arm was caught offside. I think, I think that was a, a similar one there. And, it, and we, we don't really want to see goals chalked off for that. Marginal goals, but by the letter of the law, if it is offside, it is offside. But, you know, again, it's, it's just that body shape, isn't it, where they're just running in to start their, their run yeah. early. It's just the timing has to be absolutely perfect now, spot on. Vidi Printer still says Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. Don't believe your Vidi Printer. That goal's been ruled out. Tottenham nil, Leicester 1. But as it stands, Leicester will still be going uh, second in the Premier League table. Liverpool went six points clear yesterday if Leicester get the win they'll be on 27 Everton on 26 Tottenham on 25 Manchester United leads on the way here as our next commentary on five live kicks off at half past four so we'll get the team news shortly and underway in the European Champions Cup is Harlequins uh, against Racing there's been a try Chris Jones yeah blistering start from the French here Ali Teddy Thomas there French international winner siding through to score. Brilliant try converted by Mashino. Marcus Smith has hit the post with a kick. Harlequins nil, Racing seven after nine minutes.
Connaught Bristol Bears kicks off at half past five in that competition this evening. That'll be on Sports Extra at the moment on Sports Extra Scottish Cup final. And Hearts have got that goal back early in the second half. So that's poised nicely. Celtic two, Hearts one, as is this one. Tottenham in their white shirts, playing from left to right. Dyer goes long, over the top, Bales underneath it. Johnny Evans right behind him, it goes over Bales' head and into the arms of Schmeichel. Looking forward to watching a bit of Gareth Bale here, Steve. Yeah, I mean, he was just speaking at half time when he came out to warm up, saying how much he would have lifted the dressing room, lifted this football club, the players playing with him. But just looking at Harry Kane, just looks a little bit off the pace today, Harry Kane. I'd like to see how many touches he's... Mm. Had him so far into play, the game just kind of bypassed him. You know what Harry Kane's like, he's all action, isn't he? Tracking back, plenty of touches, work great. We haven't really seen any of that this afternoon. Out of Eirelt, bouncing ball. Technique is perfect as he crashes the pass out to Reggion on the left. Hoybierg back to Dyer. Dyer's diagonal looking for the run of Aurier. Quickly closed down by Castagna. Aurier is going to take him on, gets the cross all wrong and slices it behind for the goal kick. You'd think, wouldn't you, Steve, at some point given the relentless nature of this season that Harry Kane is going to have to have, they're all going to have to have a rest, but Kane with his injury record is going to need a rest at some point. And actually having Bale now in the squad, you could play Bale through the middle, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. We've got to, to obviously recognise, and we've seen already that, that the Gareth Bale now is not the Gareth Bale of old, but with Harry Kane, you do feel as though, with, especially with him and Son, you take even one out of this team, they're not the same team. They rely so heavily on them to with their assists and their goals, have we seen as we've seen with the stats. But Gareth Bale does have the attributes to step up. Right, problem with the hair for Gareth Bale. Aerial challenge with Castagna has knocked the band off his hair. So suddenly those long flowing locks come sprawling out and very quickly has to tie it back up and sort it all out. He's ready to go for the Leicester throw. Tottenham nil, Leicester one. Ten minutes have already gone by in the second half. And Leicester with that goal ruled out for offside James Madison. Here's Vardy, oh, very nearly had the beating of Alderweireld, got a foot on the ball and knocks it behind for a corner. Had he got past him there, it had opened up for him beautifully. He always tries to sniff out danger, doesn't he, Vardy? He seems to sort of be unaware at one moment, and the next minute he's pouncing on loose balls, getting into the box there. If he chopped back onto his right foot, he would have had a shot at goal. 114 Premier League goals now for Jamie Vardy and just 223 appearances for Leicester. Corner. Madison was about to go, not quite ready. Resets. High, lofted one to the far post. Bale underneath it, stuck a left foot out, drifted beyond that left foot, heads it to his left, clears it. Lucas Mora can't collect that. Tielemans is there. Tielemans plays it all the way back to Kasper Schmeichel inside his own half. Schmeichel dummies a clearance and then Son gets close, so he clears with his right foot. Madison keeps it in play wide on the left. Offside flag is up, free kick Tottenham. Team news from Old Trafford ahead of Manchester United leads. John Murray. Quite a rotation for Manchester United. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer changes five from Thursday. They do have a cup quarter final on Wednesday. So Pogba is only on the bench. Daniel James starts for the first time since October. De Gea's back in goal. Fred and McTominay are back in the midfield and Shaw returns at left back. So Greenwood's only a substitute, as is the returning Cavani. Leeds, rather more simply, are unchanged. Thank you, John. John in the company of Robbie Savage at Old Trafford. The game kicks off at half past four in full here on Five Live, followed by West Brom Villa in full. Kicks off at 7.15. alderweireld has got his hands full with Vardy and Barnes down on the left. Manages to hold them both off, plays the ball to Sissoko, who plays it back to Alderweireld. And you can hear the applause there, which is obviously artificial uh, sort of crowd sound effects from us, but they, they were timed perfectly there because Alderweireld deserved a round of applause for his work there. And that's where, as a football player, especially in these times at the moment, they just change games. Fans, you know, they give yeah. you they give you a real buzz, they give you a lift, even if things aren't going well and you know they're on they're on your backs, it, it, it gets a reaction, whether it's from an individual or a collection. We miss them so much. Yeah, we do, Steve. I did Fulham Liverpool last weekend with 2,000 fans inside Craven Cottage, and I've enjoyed that game more than any other basically in 2020, purely for that reason. It just lifted the whole thing. Moore on the halfway line does well to lose and Didi finds Kane Kane on the turn scoops the pass to his right he bounces in front of Aurier just outside the Leicester penalty area swinging ball to the far post knotted down by Reguillon Moore is trying to get there Reguillon's appealing for something 
possibly a handball against a Leicester player, but Craig Pawson says no. Low ball from Kane into the edge of the Leicester area, dealt with by Ndidi. Still Leicester leading by this goal to nil. Thought they had that second early in the second half, but a marginal offside, really marginal against James Madison, has kept Tottenham right in this game. Hoydieg across to Reggie on long way out. He's thinking about the shot here, 40 yards out. Not the best ball to Moura. Moura's lost it to Indeed. He was looking for Vardy. Vardy actually wasn't ready to go there, so he pointed to Madison and said, play it to, uh, to Barnes on the right. Justin goes flying past him as the decoy. Now Barnes has it. Now he looks for Vardy. Cross comes in. Vardy heads it down on goal. Vardy's header hits Alderweireld. Larissa dived the other way and Leicester lead by two goals to nil. Barnes delayed the cross to the absolute perfect moment, floated it into Vardy, who's always a problem. His header was bang on, because Alderweireld had to get something on it, and that's why it's Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. Well, indeed, he won the ball in the middle third, and you said Vardy made the run but wasn't, wasn't ready, so the ball got delayed, delayed out wide to Madison, then to Barnes, and it was just put in perfectly for Vardy. Headed down into an area where there was no danger, but the pace on the cross just hits his hip or, f or fire all the way to fire and just goes into an empty net. But great patience in that Leicester yeah. play. That, that, I thought that was really interesting. Vardy knew he didn't have the gas there, Steve, to, to make the run that he wanted to make. So he said to, said to them, hold on, and then I'll get there, didn't he? Exactly that. You know, I think, what, two minutes, 90 seconds before that, he said he'd been hustling and bussing. And when, on that turnover where indeed he won it, he was like, look, I can't run, just hold the ball. They put the foot on the ball, the ball went wide, and then that's when he had a bit of an injection of pace. So Daniel Amate, back from a hamstring injury, comes on for Leicester. Timothy Castagna, also back from a hamstring injury, uh, has played 60 minutes here today, and so that is enough for him. So Leicester have made the change. They lead by two goals to nil. What's the latest in the Scottish Cup final? Already for sight. Well, there's 2 1 here, 63 minutes gone, but it very nearly was 2 each. Hearts brought on Josh Ginelli to give them some pace. His first touch of the ball, he got uh, took advantage of a mess between Duffy and Julian. Couldn't quite get the ball away as he wanted to, but nevertheless forced a save out of Hazard. In other circumstances, it would be two each, but at the moment it's 2-1. Thank you, Roddy. Commentary continues over on 5 Live Sports Extra. So Tottenham with the mountain to climb at home, trailing Leicester by two goals to nil. Bales on the field. Kane and Son exchange passes. Kane, lovely turn, edge of the box. And Didi tries to knock him off the ball. Kane shoots, Schmeichel saves. Good power, just too close to the keeper. Steve Sibwell. Well, that's the best bit of play we've seen from Spurs. They've not been fluid in any of their attacking uh, uh, threats so far. But there, the movement, the pace, the, the, the purpose of the pass that was going in, the, the trickery of Kane, and he manages to get a shot off. It was much better from Spurs. We've not seen that enough this afternoon. They look hungry now. Son is on top of Tielemans to win the ball back for Tottenham. Leicester were trying to play out. Can Tottenham respond quickly? Trailing 2-0 into the last half hour of the game. It's remarkable the difference between Leicester's home form and away form. It really is. This could be six wins out of seven for them on the road, having won at West Brom, 5-2 at Manchester City, good win at Arsenal. I saw them win 4-1 at Leeds. That, that was an exceptional performance as well. And the late winner from Vardy at Sheffield United. Yet at home, you know, they've been beaten four times by the likes of West Ham, Aston Villa, Fulham and Everton on Wednesday. Ball is up to Vardy, goes bouncing over his head. Alderweireld's behind him and Eric Dyer collects. It was, also, it was also the ball from Barnes that was perfect when he played it, Steve, because he just put it into that area where he knew Vardy would get something on it. And actually Vardy couldn't get enough power on the header probably to score, but put it back into the area that, that, that made it a problem and got, got a little bit of luck from it. Aurier has the ball on the right for Tottenham. That looks over hit. Can Kane keep it in? He can down by the byline, but he gets a touch on it, and it enables Daniel Amate to bring it away for Leicester. Madison gets a shove in the back from Hoybierg. Free kick for Leicester. They lead 2-0, uh, but it was just, as well as the delay, it was it was clever a cleverly worked goal, wasn't it? It was. You know, the Barnes, the way to probably describe that was like a, a, an old Steven Gerrard pass, a raking yeah. diagonal pass, he just sort of sort of might be lovely with his laces. It was always going to go over Bruno Verrold. Yeah. Perfectly executed goal from Leicester. Change for Tottenham, Serge Aurier comes off. Not been the best afternoon for him. 
not ignored by Jose Mourinho, but doesn't go for a little slap of the hands. Harry Winks comes on, another try at the stoop, Chris Jones. Looking bleak for Harlequins here, too much power from the French, a rolling wall, Rassing hooker, Kevin Le Guin crashing over, Machino kicked the extras, the earlier knocked over a penalty following the Teddy Thomas try. 17-0 to Rassing over Quinns, not even 20 minutes gone. Thank you, Chris. Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. Jamie Vardy's penalty and Toby Alderweireld's own goal. John Murray was talking about the League Cup quarter-final action in the week. Leicester not involved. Their next game at home to Manchester United on Boxing Day. Tottenham are involved Wednesday. And they're away to Stoke. 5.30 kick-off. There'll be full commentary on 5 Live. Johnny Evans wins a header. Brendan Rodgers, as we said before the game, has gone up against Jose Mourinho seven times as a manager, drawn two, lost five. He will not have a better chance than he does at this point uh, to make that a, a first win. Dyer clears, slips over, long ball downfield with his left foot, chested down by Hoybierg, intercepted by Barnes, only temporarily, Harry Winks is on the ball, so Harry Winks is there to keep the tempo for Tottenham, get the passes going, keep them moving. Kane's floated ball to the far post, chested down by Amate, under pressure from Son, clears with his right foot, Winks wins the header, Hoybierg's there, little ball forward to Harry Kane. Kane, brilliant turn again, lovely dummy from Kane, almost into the penalty area, and then finally, Leicester managed to wrestle the ball away from him. Desperately trying there, Kane to make a difference for his team. Jamie Vardy on the move again for Leicester. Support from Harvey Barnes on the outside, can't find him. Winks is there and intercepts. Now, this is going to be a big goal in the Scottish Cup final. Roddy Forsyth. Celtic two, Hearts two. Ginelli's appearance for Hearts has been a master stroke. He took a corner kick, this one right under the crossbar. Stephen Kingsley was there for a header. The ball scarcely went over the line, but it was seen by the assistant referee in the far side. He granted the goal. Celtic two, Hearts two. 68 minutes gone. Penalties after extra time if that is required in the Scottish Cup final. Commentary over on Five Live Sports Extra. Moura with the cross from the left. Oh, Kane with the header. It's a flick header behind him. He wasn't in a position to actually head that on goal, but he was in space. It goes up in the air and Schmeichel catches it. Steve Sidwell. Looked a little bit indecisive there, Kane, didn't he? He was sort of in an area where thinking, shall I flick it on or shall I try and go for goal? He made a sort of dying run in front of the near post where he tried to flick it on, but he just couldn't execute it but overall I just think Spurs have been have been poor today they look they look very sort of reactive instead of proactive they're waiting for things to happen looks like it needs to be like a, a bit of brilliance from Kane to to get them back in this goal or something from Son because at the moment collectively it's just not working yeah there's been a, a couple of Kane moments in this second half where he's been surrounded by blue shirts and, and with incredible skill has managed to work his way out of a position to get the shot away but Leicester have managed to prevent him scoring so far. Just into Vardy. Vardy flicks it through Dyer's legs, tries to collect that flick himself. Dyer back to Lloris. Vardy can't close that down. Cleared by Lloris. Chested down by Tielemans. Leicester, as it stands, going second in the Premier League table, leading Tottenham by two goals to nil. Brendan Rodgers, very content with things at the moment, just throws the ball at his left back, James Justin. Holds it high above his head. Madison comes running towards him. Justin's taken his time. They've already played 22 minutes of this second half at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Amate, curling ball out to the right to Albright, just turned into a 50-50. Reguillon won it with a header. Finds Kane, strong challenge on Kane from Tielemans. Took ball and man. And Craig Pawson said uh, that is a free kick to Tottenham, who've only been beaten twice in the Premier League this season. Uh, they weren't at the races on the opening day of the season against Everton at home, lost that game, and then obviously lost at Liverpool on Wednesday night when they had the chances to possibly win that game in the second half. So this would only be a third defeat of the season for them. But as we know, in this season, everyone is, is beating everyone. So it continues. Sissoko down the right to Alderweireld, who's in a advanced position on the right wing I'll tell you what if Tottenham lose it here which they have and DD wide to Barnes oh Barnes can't keep that in pacey pass at him comes off his right foot and goes out for a throw this is where the match then now becomes dangerous because it starts getting stretched and yes you would say that would be more maybe space for Kane to come into but indeed he's been around him just like we've seen there but it also allows gaps for Madison to get into and Vardy he loves he loves space anything to run into 
That's his bread and butter. Yeah, Jamie Vardy licking his lips at the moment for Leicester. Son knocked off the ball by Justin, fairly so, into the feet of Madison. Madison just putting it into the channel because he knew where Vardy was going to be. He's onto the ball and he's got Alderweireld backpedalling. Little switch pass here to Harvey Barnes. Got a hand in the back from Winks there. Stays on his feet, plays it back to Madison. He'll go for the curler at the near post. Lloris watches it fly by for a goal kick. So Celtic 2, Hearts 2 in the Scottish Cup final midway through the second half. Five live sports action with full commentary of that one. Brighton 1, Sheffield United 1 in the 12 o'clock kickoff in the Premier League today. We've got Manchester United Leeds kicking off at half past four. Full commentary of that one, followed by West Brom Villa at 7.15. And then Robbie Savage and Chris Sutton taking the calls on 6.06 tonight from around about nine o'clock this evening. All that Premier League action on Match of the Day 2 on BBC One with Sports Personality of the Year uh, preceding that on BBC One at 8 o'clock this evening. Can Tottenham find a way back in here? They've got just over 20 minutes to do it. Reggion brings the ball in from the left flank, finds Son. Son in a central position, 30 yards out, in his lime green boots. Fires a low pass to Sissoko. Sissoko across the face of the area to no one in particular, but he's got lucky it's found Reggion. Reggion on the turn, plays it back to Alderweireld. Alderweireld across to Hoibierg on the left. Leicester back in numbers, holding a line on the edge of their penalty area as Tottenham work it from left to right. Sissoko stops. Back to Kane. Kane across here to Hoibierg. Chip ball, looking for Son. It almost fell for the volley. Justin's there, just nods it away from him and behind for a corner. It's not quite got the, the pace, the intensity, is it, from Tottenham? No, they need to move the ball a bit more, quicker, a bit of a purpose, but good play from, from Leicester because disciplined in their shape, not coming out of their areas, being hard to break down. 20 minutes to play, Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. Gareth Bale, corner, a little nod of the head from Bale into the near post, it comes, Moura jumps, Kane flips on, oh, Son shoots, brilliant save from Schmeichel, acrobatics on the goal line, he was going to his right, he then had to switch direction and throw himself to his left, and he got his giant frame in the way, Steve Sidwell. It was a fantastic ball in from Gareth Bale, was it Moura that, I think it was Dyer that got the flick towards it, uh, the back end of the box and uh, and son the ball was behind him wasn't he yeah. he's done well to get the shot on but great save from Schmeichel another corner in from Bale Leicester have half cleared it but now ball in from Reggion falls to the feet of Son will try the shot that'll be blocked on the edge of the penalty area comes back to Reggion so Leicester under pressure but leading 2-0 Reggion high ball towards Dyer who gets up and wins the header bounces inside the Leicester box Johnny Evans hooks it clear Winks just glances the ball off his head to Alderweireld. Alderweireld passes it across the halfway line to Hoidieg. Hoidieg to Dyer. Dyer wide to Bale. Has not been able to make much of an impact as yet. Gets away from Justin. That's a foul on him. Just showed enough of it to indeed he to tempt him. He slid in, catches Bale, free kick. Bale might fancy this actually, yeah. Steve. Yep. Yeah, it's definitely in his range. You've seen this before from him, but. Just like when you said there, when Leicester having a bit of pressure on the ball, but look comfortable in, in here in, 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 under pressure. You know they've got a real structure, a real spine of the team that are forcing Spurs wide. And Sam Wright will get the ball wide and we'll try and deal with the crosses if they come in. But we're stopping them at source at the moment. This could be a, a bail dipper. This, you know, one of those ones where I mean, I, I don't know if you can do this technique, Steve, but it sort of reminds me of. Ronaldo bringing it into the Premier League where he, where he sort of hits it face on and then the ball really swerves and goes up and down. Bale tries that and it's just too high and goes skimming over the crossbar and behind for the goal kick. It's def definitely a technique that I haven't got, <laughs> never had. Uh, I'll save that for the, for the computer games, but <laughs> it's definitely one that works because we've seen it, haven't we, with the Ronaldo and Gareth Bale, how they do it, they sort of hit up, up the ball and it sort of dips over the wall and, and down them. A lot of the keepers are all flat-footed, aren't they? They can't, can't save it at all. Jose Mourinho's complaining. I'm, I'm guessing about the time this is taking for Schmeichel to take the goal kick, and he's having a word with the fourth official, David Coote. And then the whistle blows, and Craig Pawson tells Kasper Schmeichel to get on with it. So what have we got? 18 minutes plus added time remaining. Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. All bright and wide on the right, keeps it in play for Leicester just inside the Tottenham half. A little bit of short triangulation passing now worked in field to Madison onto Barnes back to Madison again 
30 yards out to Barnes. Barnes, ball on his left foot, two Tottenham midfielders, Winks and Hoybierg in front of him. Plays it back to Ndidi, across to Barnes, loose first touch. Winks is in to win it for Tottenham, plays it back to Bale, risky pass across his half from Bale, but finds the Brazilian Moura. Son's got his arm up and wants it early towards Kane. What a lovely little layoff from Kane. Moura just trying to play it in behind Daniel Amate, looking for Reggie on Amate, had enough pace to get there, and Schmeichel is able to clear with a low pass up the middle of the pitch to Ndidi, tackled by Moura, caught in possession, Fafana's there to clear up the mess for Leicester, but offside flag is up, so that'll be a free kick to Leicester. If Tottenham fans want to feel ever so slightly better about this, and if they're into omens, the only time that Leicester in their history have ever won both games in a top-flight season away at Arsenal and Tottenham was the season that Tottenham did the double in 1960-61. So I think Tottenham fans would take a defeat today if it meant they finished the season with the league title and the FA Cup. I'm not saying that's going to happen, I'm just saying that is what has happened. Jose Mourinho is chuntering away, pretty much to himself at the moment, as Schmeichel clears the ball high in the air. Just over 15 minutes to play, still Celtic two hearts two in the Scottish Cup final, still Tottenham 2-0 down here. And at the moment, Steve, it is hard for, them to, for us to see them finding a way back into the game, isn't it? Yeah, they just need to up the tempo, don't they? They need a, a, a little spark. It's coming, fits the spurts, but not, not consistent, is it? There's not been a sustained attack where they've had a lot of pressure really going at, at Leicester, and Leicester look comfortable. They look really dominant today, in and out of possession, comfortable, just letting Spurs have it, knowing that there could be a, a quick turnover, and if Leicester do get it, then they'll catch them on the, on the counter-attack. I wonder if you offered Leicester, you could play all your games away from home in the Premier League. Whether they'd, uh, they'd take that, considering the way they've been playing away from home this season. Elder Vyralt across to Dyer. Jose Mourinho is scratching his head at the moment. Furrowed brow. All Brighton. Wins the ball for Leicester on the right. He's then run off it by a combination of Mora and Reggion. Tottenham do look a little jaded, has to be said. And Steve picked up on that in the first half as well. Sissoko back to Winks. Winks with his head up, threads a lovely ball down the right for Sissoko. Tackled by James Justin. Knocks the ball out of play for a throw-in. Mourinho doing the ball boy book this time, going to collect it for Tottenham. Sissoko looking for an option. Bale comes short, holds off Harvey Barnes, curls a pass with his left foot across the halfway line to Dyer. Dyer is able to stride forward into lots of space, still going Dyer, up to the edge of the Leicester box. Now a low ball in towards Son, takes a touch, it's loose inside the Leicester area. Kane can't get onto the end of it, Madison brings it down, Alderweireld is there, not the best pass. Hoybjerg there just in time with Vardy behind him, otherwise Vardy had a clear run from the halfway line. A clear run, Vardy just seems like he's winter at the moment. Yeah. He, he let Dyer just sort of run past him with, with ease there to, to get a, a simple pass into the box for Son, who just couldn't control it, it was just too far in front, but they're knocking on the door, Spurs. Hoybjerg looking to find Reggion, playing a ball in between Amate and Fafana, but Reggion will run the other way, Schmeichel lets it run behind for the goal kick, so we're 40 minutes away from Manchester United Leeds, John Murray and Robbie Savage bringing you that one. Sam Allardyce back in the Premier League, full commentary on West Brom Villa. Kicks off at 7.15. At the moment on our monitor, we're looking at Tielemans having volleyed the ball away, his leg coming into contact with Harry Kane's leg, but only because of where the two were standing. He's sort of half-tripped Kane, he doesn't go down. I mean, if we're going to give penalties for that, which they're not, then, you know... What is the game coming to? But we spoke about the top of the show with me, Nathan and Newell, and oh, oh no. Harry Kane's throw straight to Vardy, wide on the right. This could be a third for Leicester if they can work it. Vardy into Barnes. Is he pulled back by Sissoko? No, says Craig Pawson. He reckons that Barnes slipped. Video assistant referee will have a look. James Justin thought about having a shot, and now he's lost the ball, and Leicester are out of position here as Kane comes charging forward. Kane's running out of gas. Justin's caught him. He wants a foul for that. I'm not sure there was enough in it, and he looked tired, Kane. Kane looks really sluggish, really tired, and it sums it up by that throw. Literally gifted a throw back into his own half where Leicester pounced. Ball in towards Barnes. Might find Vardy with the flick on. No. Alderweireld is there. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. Still Celtic two, Hearts two. If you want full commentary of that one, it's over on Five Live Sports Extra. 
both stations, Five Live and Sports Extra, are available via the BBC Sounds app. Don't forget, here's Madison. Madison with his right foot finds Ndidi. And BBC Sounds is where you can find uh, all our podcasts as well, including the Football Daily, which will round up all the weekend's action for you in your inbox tomorrow morning. Free kick Leicester, Harvey Barnes was caught with his back to goal. Eric Dyer screaming that he got the ball at referee Craig Pawson. And Craig Pawson says, no, you didn't. And that's a yellow card. And we're just looking again, Steve, at the, the potential penalty shout for the... I don't think Sissoko quite got a tug on his shirt. I think he was trying to tug his shirt and his hand sort of slipped off him. Yeah, I don't know why Barnes didn't take the, the shot. It seemed like it was there to take. Maybe it was a little bit behind. You could see what he was trying to do in terms of holding his run and then taking it the other way, but he felt like it was just there to just side foot into the bottom corner, into the bottom left-hand corner of Maurice, but didn't take the opportunity. Tottenham nil, Leicester 2. Set piece for Leicester, free kick. Madison delivers for Farner, header on it, looping high and over the crossbar. Madison, like Ward Prowse, I love watching him take corners and, and free kicks. It's a real art. You can tell the amount of practice and work that goes into it. Winks bringing the ball out from the back for Tottenham. We've had the, the Schmeichel save at close range from Son in the second half. We've had the low left-footed drive from Kane from the edge of the box, which he saved pretty comfortably. Ball down the left here for Reggion, headed away by Amate, and then Ndidi is back to clear it high in the air, Sissoko's underneath it, he heads it straight in the air, and then it's an air shot, misses it, and actually is able to still keep the ball in play wide on the right. Tottenham are running out of time here, 2-0 down at home to Leicester, 10 minutes to play in the game. The ball is played wide to Sissoko from Aldevira, finds Son, who's been really quiet, actually, this afternoon. Leicester have dealt with him well, Sissoko's ball in, Mora, Good in the air, jumps, wins the flick on, down to Kane. Good pass from Kane, finds Reggion, cross comes in, looking for Son, but it only finds Schmeichel. And again, it's just that final ball, isn't it? You know, they just lack that conviction. It began from back to front far too quick, to be fair, throughout the, the whole game. And when it has got in with that bit of quality, they've just lacked... They've got numbers in the box, but just lack that final bit of accuracy on the mm. final ball. Schmeichel clears with his right foot. And Didi to Madison, that's got to be a foul from Winks, just grabs him and wrestles him away from the ball. Harry Winks gets a yellow card, free kick Leicester, they'll be happy with that because they can just slow this game down. They need to change, certainly need to change for Spurs, there's 10 minutes to go, 80 minutes on the clock and they need to get out of this rigid structure and, and go for it, you know, the 2-0 down, they need to come out, they can't just stay and mark the space, they need to engage on players like Son is doing here and get close. Yeah, made the three changes because Winks is on, Bale is on and Lucas Moura is on. Lacelso had to come off with the injury. We're into the last ten minutes. Leicester still leading 2-0, going second in the Premier League. Might fancy a third. Madison on the ball. Madison, little switch pass to Vardy. Inside the area, shoots. That's blocked by Aldevera. Comes back to Barnes. That shot is blocked by Dyer. On the turn, Madison again finds Vardy. Still inside the Tottenham box. Looking for the curler. Saved by Lloris. Down to his left. Couldn't quite get that far enough into the corner. Uh, let's check in on the Scottish Cup final. Roddy Forsyth. Five minutes to go here. Still two each. Celtic have made two important substitutions. They've brought on their pacey fullbacks, Laxalt and Frimpong. And it's they who are dominating at the moment, trying to kill this game before it has to go to extra time. Perhaps even penalty kicks. It's two each, five to go. If you want commentary on that, Sports Extra is the place to be. Sissoko looking for Son. That's a weak cross. What's Son appealing for there? The pass didn't get to him. And Didi slid in, I thought he just got a leg on it, and Son seems to appeal for a handball. But it's the same story, isn't it? They've got into the box, you know, great link-up play with Sissoko and Bale down this right-hand side, and it's a simple ball into Son, but he just lacks conviction. <laughs> that, that was Fofana, who knocks the ball at 100 miles an hour from about a foot away into Ndidi, who's, I mean, he's got his arms up because he's falling, again. VAR will have had a look and not going to give anything for that. Good speed from Mora down the left. Tottenham need to find something sharpish here. 2-0 down. Ball back to Dyer. Dyer might fancy that from the edge of the box. Dummies the shot. Plays it wide left to Reggion. Cross comes in. Bale jumps for it. Beaten in the air. Foul by Bale as he goes into the back of Ndidi. And that is a free kick for Leicester. He's been outstanding today, Johnny Evans. Anything that's coming to the box, he's dealt with it. He's put his head on the line. He's defended first. Done really well on the ball in possession. And a great sign for Leicester since he's been there. 
Steve Sibwell with us here, closing stages of Tottenham Leicester. Leicester about to make another change, another Belgian, Dennis Pratt, is going to come on, but not just yet, because Schmeichel has got the game back underway. Long clearance downfield, Barnes jumps, it goes over his head, and out for a throw into Tottenham inside their own half, which Sissoko gets ready to take. Coming off is Harvey Barnes. Well played, Harvey Barnes, good performance. High five from Brendan Rodgers, loves that. And I bet you, I, I know I know Brendan Rodgers won't be thinking about it just yet because things can change in the blink of an eye, but when you get the chance, having lost or having not been able to beat Jose Mourinho in seven games, that walk over for the little handshake at the end, Steve, is going to be lovely, isn't it? It's going gonna, it's gonna to taste nice. <laughs> but as you say, there's still minutes to play. He'll be looking, more importantly, just for a reaction from this game from their defeat against Everton where they were poor, but what a reaction it's been from Leicester today. Tottenham go to Wolves for their first festive fixture on the 27th. Alderweire floats the ball forward. For final wins, the header. Kane goes down edge of the area, next to Ndidi, wants a penalty for that, and Craig Pawson says no. Vardy's pass is ahead of Madison, and both of them howl in frustration at that. Hoy Dieg wide left to Moura. Tottenham have three in the box. Son, Kane and Bale. Moura goes for the byline, pulls it back. Fafana blocks. Tottenham appeal for a handball. Craig Pawson has a good view of it. And again, he says no penalty. Madison gets onto it wide on the right. Vardy starts to make the run through the middle, then drops deep. And then Vardy spins and flicks a high pass down the right for Albright to chase. And then Vardy... The ultimate poacher realised that Dyer might try and hit that back to his goalkeeper. It's fallen to Vardy inside the box. Angle is tight, plays it back to Tielemans, takes a touch and smashes it over the bar. Should have been 3 0. Again, Vardy doing what he does best, just sniffing out the danger. You can see him there limping though at the moment. I, I, I feel as though he's just carrying like a little knock. He's holding his groin. So he's bending over now, but again, just sniffs out danger and just waits for support. But tees it up for Tielemans, who skies one over the bar. Video assistant referee has had a look at those couple of penalty claims, potential handball and the one on Harry Kane. Kane came back to have a word with Craig Pawson. I can see Pawson saying, look, they're telling me no penalty. And also, the referee saw it and said no penalty. So he's made the right call out on the pitch, certainly according to the video assistant referee. Hoybieg on the ball for Tottenham. And we're now into the 86th minute of the game. Leicester leading 2-0. And as it stands, going second in the Premier League table. And bouncing back well from the midweek defeat at home to Everton, if they can hold on, because Tottenham are still coming. Mora, back to Winks. All he can see is ten blue shirts in front of him there, plus Kasper Schmeichel, massive figure in light green, standing in the middle of his six-yard box. Tottenham have not been able to find a way past him yet. Hoy Dierg, chip ball to Bale. Bale, 35 yards out, almost overruns it. Vardy decides not to make the challenge because he knew he might concede the free kick. Dyer to Moura. They're going in Tottenham, working their way in and then having to come back out because Leicester is just shutting the door every single time. Back to Dyer. Tottenham continue to be patient. Dyer now through the middle looking for Kane, trying to force the issue there. Ball spins up in the air and that is a miscued header from Hoybjerg and it bounces into the arms of Schmeichel. Steve Sidwell. Leicester have looked absolutely phenomenal on the counter-attack, out of possession, solid, in a base, in a structure. Vardy's a, a willing runner, I think he might come off relatively soon, Inacho's yeah. looking to come away. Looks like he's struggling, Vardy. Yeah, just last ten minutes or so, yeah. isn't he? Just sort of he's slowed over, down. He looks like he's just holding his right groin yeah, as such. Yeah, and do you know, yeah, he is, isn't he? He's gone down now. I've seen him do that this season already so it might have been in the Leeds game as well where he can't remember which one it was just felt to me he's staying out there but you're right Inacho is coming on shortly for Vardy Vardy's had a goal and assist today he's done his job for Leicester and he absolutely loves it away from home 11 goals in the Premier League nine of them away from home six of the 11 have been penalties so Vardy's coming off now that just the way he's moving will be a concern Leicester have not got a League Cup quarter-final coming they'll be hoping he is ready for Boxing Day against Manchester United. Hamden Park, Roddy for sight. Into five minutes of injury time, and then uh, Ginelli just missed a chance for Hearts that would have settled it surely. He was 15 yards out, dead in front of goal. This time he scooped the ball over the top. It's still Celtic 2, Hearts 2. Sounds like extra time beckons. You might just be able to fit that in, five live sports extra, and then get back for the start of Manchester United Leeds at half past four, which is our next commentary 
on five live. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. 89th minute of the game. Schmeichel whacks it downfield. Eric Dyer knocks it out of play. Looks like it's going to be back to back defeats for Tottenham. So just a, a slight slip in the title race for them. But you have to say Tottenham and Leicester are in that title race. Southampton are in it. Manchester City are in it. Manchester United, Liverpool at the top, of course. Everton are in it. They went up to second yesterday. Currently sitting third in the table. West Ham will tell you they're in it uh, as well on 21 points. That is a full 10 points behind Liverpool, but teams dropping points left, right and centre. Leicester have the ball and they're keeping the ball wide on the right, deep in Tottenham territory, trying to win themselves a free kick. That's all Brighton. Tottenham get it back. Clearance only as far as Ndidi. Now it breaks loose on the edge of the box. Pratt finds Ianacho. Ianacho. Just plays it out to the right. Madison's going to keep it and tease Reguilon to Ian Acho, who in turn keeps it away from Moura. Now Madison down by that corner flag on the right. Great ball retention. This is very, very annoying for Tottenham. And eventually Madison knocks it into the shins of Reguilon. And it goes out for. What are we giving here? Offside? That's offside, is it, Steve? Offside yeah. for Madison, yeah. Brilliant there from Leicester. Just running the clock down, toying with the Spurs defenders. They was chasing the boy couldn't get it back really good play there from Leicester Brighton won Sheffield United won in the early kickoff in the Premier League today Kilmarnock nil Aberdeen two Harry Winks ball forward up to the edge of the area flick on looking for Kane Amati is there for Leicester and he is not going to take any chances with Kane lurking behind him just thumps it away uh, with his right foot Manchester United's women 6-1 winners against Bristol City Arsenal 4 Everton nil in the WSL Brighton 1, Reading 2, latest. That game kicked off at half past two in the WSL as Aldevaro plays the ball forward. Mora heads it back across the face of the penalty area. We've got four minutes of added time. Might be time for Leicester to get a third if Madison can find the pass. Dyer makes the tackle. Ian Acho trying to get away. And Dyer actually, having made the tackle, has to go back and get the ball under pressure from Pratt. Lloris plays it back to Dyer. Dyer in the right back position on the turn. Chips it forward. Bale can't get there. Indeed, he intercepts it. Leicester totally in control here. Justin brings it infield. Looking for Ian Acho. Very nearly got it back. It comes off Justin's boot uh, and goes behind for the goal kick. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. Leicester have been classy today, but been just so disappointed with Spurs in terms of their final third entries and getting into the Leicester box they like again now I know it's the 90th minute they've just been going direct non-stop for most of the game and they're definitely a team and a structure when they go 1-0 up the game and the game plan can fall into their, yeah. into their laps but when they go behind they do look to struggle and it is the question I'm not this is not hindsight it is the question about them in terms of and for Leicester maintaining a realistic title challenge playing football like that unlike Liverpool, for example, who go to Selhurst Park and just, you know, walk all over teams. So, uh, let's quickly check in on the Scottish Cup final. Must be nearing extra time. Roddy Forsyth. It must be indeed. Uh, we're actually four and a half minutes into injury time, five minutes to be played, but there's been another stoppage, so there may be a good minute left, and this is still two each. Remember, Josh Janelli missing a golden chance for Harps just as we moved into injury time. Two each. How long left here? My stopwatch tells me two and a half minutes for Tottenham to try and find two goals. Otherwise, Leicester are going second in the table. They're leading 2-0. Vardy with the penalty just before half-time. Offside against Leicester, which changed the shape of the game, set it beautifully up for Leicester, and it was an unnecessary one for Tottenham to concede. Madison, then just after half-time, thought he'd score with a brilliant finish, ruled out for a marginal offside, and then a really good counter-attacking goal, eventually an own goal from Alderweireld, but beautifully worked by Leicester, gave them the 2-0 lead. High ball in the air from Hoybier. Mora climbs, comes tumbling down to the floor, didn't win the header. Dyer volleys it forward. Winks is on the ball, chips it forward. It's been a lot of that from Tottenham, as Steve's been saying. Just those floated balls into the edge of the box, aimed at Bale and Kane and Mora to try and win a header and, and, and knock it down. It's, it's not been precise enough or clever enough as Schmeichel again thumps the ball as hard as he can downfield. Minute and a half to play. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. Sissoko to Eric Dyer, Dyer striding forward for Tottenham, feels like it's too late, even if they were to get one now, Dyer to Kane, Kane plays it wide to Reguilon, just takes one touch, immediately gets it into the area, over the head of Mora, only as far as Winks the clearance, wide here to Sissoko, 
Sissoko on his left foot's got the beating of Pratt. No, Pratt manages to get back at him, stick a leg out, puts it on the ball, out for a throw-in to Tottenham wide on the right. One minute of added time to be played. Tottenham nil, Leicester two. It looks like it's going to be Leicester's day. It looks like it's going to be Brendan Rodgers' day, who all those years ago, working under Jose Mourinho at Chelsea, when Steve Sidwell was there, is finally going to get the better of one of his mentors. Madison trying to clear acrobatically on the volley. Winks heads it forward, Dyer flicks it on. Volleyed away here by Amate. Headed sideways by Alderweireld. Albrighton is knocked off the ball fairly by Harry Kane. This is last chance saloon, 20 seconds to play. Kane might just have to do it on his own. Like Roy the Rovers goes for it wide on the left with the left foot from an impossible angle and sends the ball over the bar and behind for the goal kick. Tottenham are trailing 2-0. It's just, it's not been their day, Steve. Leicester have been the better team, haven't they? Leicester have been by far the better team. Uh, the work rate, the intensity, the way that they broke, uh, the purpose of their attacks. Spurs just looked just off the pace. The, you know, Kane's been poor today, Son non-existent. I think just the, the general lineup, the, the formation and the players that, that was out there today was just to, to negate Leicester, nullify them. All over. Back-to-back -back defeats for Tottenham in the Premier League. Brendan Rodgers finally gets one over on Jose Mourinho. Superb performance from Leicester. The Jamie Vardy penalty just before the break. The Toby Alderweireld own goal in the second half has sealed it. Leicester go up to second in the Premier League. It's finished here. Tottenham nil, Leicester two.